on Comcast Sportsnet. Last week, the Idaho Vandals air attack grounded Northern Illinois. Up next, the Huskies face another big arm and big body QB who can find the end zone. This rivalry's featured some close games lately. Today, can the Huskies stay in command? It's a festive atmosphere in DeKalb. It's homecoming weekend. The Northern Illinois Huskies play host to their conference rivals, the Western Michigan Broncos. Good afternoon, everybody. Alongside former college coach Bob Kamel, I'm David Kaplan. We were here a week ago when Nathan Enderley and the Idaho Vandals stunned this crowd with a 34-31 win. For Northern Illinois to get back to what they want to do, they have to run the football better. I don't think there's any question, David. The Vandals' offensive line was 306 pounds average. This Western Michigan offensive line is even bigger. The way to nullify Western Michigan's running game is to do this. Keep Northern Illinois' offense on the field, put the ball in Chandler Harnish's hand, and have him hand the football off to Miko Brown and Chad Spann. Keep the defense off the field. All right, you mentioned Miko Brown. This is a guy that can pop you for 150. He's done that already. Spann has a nose for the end zone, and Harnish, a very good runner from the QB spot. Well, every time Northern Illinois has success, it's because they've been able to rush the football. The problem last week was this. Chandler Harnish had to rush the football rather than Nico Brown or Chad Spann. Put the game in Chandler Harnish's hand, put the football in Nico Brown and Chad Spann's midsection, and you'll have success here at Husky Stadium. And you take a look at the numbers right there, and Chandler Harnish, the leading rusher a week ago. That has got to change today. The backs have to be much better. Now, we talked about in the open the quarterback for Western Michigan, Tim Hiller. This guy can find the end zone a big arm. There's no question. He's a big timer. He is tied for fifth all-time in the match for touchdown passes with a young guy by the name of Ben Roethlisberger. Look at this. Ranked second in Western Michigan his uh, history in touchdown passes. Second in passing yards, 105 completions. Second in Western Michigan history. An unbelievable resume for an unbelievable young quarterback. All right, it's rainy, it's chilly, good football weather, and it's homecoming. Should have a great one. Grab something to eat, sit back, and we've got Western Michigan and Northern Illinois coming up next on Comcast Sportsnet. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest-free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow-up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1-800-CHECKUP today. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest-free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow-up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1-800-CHECKUP today. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Larry English, you were just selected in the first round by San Diego in the pro football draft. Where are you going to go? I'm going to Fatty's. Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official NIU pre- and post-game headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our high-definition big screens or enjoying some of our famous grilled food in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. It's all at Fatty's Pub and Grill, located just south of Husky Stadium on West Lincoln Highway in DeKalb. Sometimes in a tournament, you're going to get low on chips. Got to push them all in to stay alive. And then, you wait. Are you ready for tournament poker? Learn for free at the world's largest poker site. PokerStars.net 
NIU football on Comcast Sports that is brought to you by Kishwaukee Community Hospital, National Bank and Trust Company, Fatty's Pub and Grill, and the Village Commons Bookstore. All right, it's rainy, it's chilly. We got a nice crowd on hand. It's homecoming. WMU and NIU at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. I'm David Kaplan, former college coach Bob Kamel is our expert analyst. And Bobby, let's take a look at the keys to today's game as you look through some of the numbers. You crunched everything. Well, one of the things Western Michigan has to do, they have to be able to run the football to set up the pass. Northern Illinois, run the football, keep the Northern Illinois defense off the field. All right, let's go down to the third member of our crew, and Jim Blaney is with Coach Jerry Kill. David, thank you very much. Joined by Coach Jerry Kill. Jerry, how different is it in preparing for a conference opponent, a team you're always very familiar with and you get to see every year? Well, the big thing is, is there's some fam familiarity with, you know, each of us, and, and it gives us a chance all summer long to prepare and get ready, and I think both teams have done this, and we're starting off with a big game here at home. Tackling was a problem in the game last week against Idaho. Is that something you specifically worked on this week? Well, certainly we concentrate on the fundamentals all the time. Uh, we, we tried to get our legs back a little bit. I pulled the pads off of them, uh, went shells on Wednesday, and hopefully we'll be fresh-legged and ready to play. Coach, good luck today. Thank you very much. Appreciate all right, David, back to you. All right, Jimmy will be checking in with us throughout the day with various observations from both sidelines. Our keys that Bob came up with brought to you by the fine folks here in town at University Plaza. Our series history, Bob, you get competitive football games. 29-26, 17-13, 16-14. I mean, when these two teams lock horns, you know you're in for 60 minutes of football. Well, I think it's emblematic of the Mid-American Conference. You know, for years now, people have been talking about establishing parity across the greater scheme of college football. Parity's been the byword of the Mid-American Conference from day one. And one of the things you have to be able to do, when you come and play a Mid-American game, Mid-American Conference game, you better be fundamentally sound. You better be able to tackle, you better be able to block, because the conference year in and year out puts a champion at the top. A couple years later, they're fourth or fifth place. Parity. There's the head coach of the Western Michigan Broncos doing a real nice job, Bill Cuban. Outstanding there, football coach. Came from Stanford University as the offensive coordinator. And there is the head man of the Northern Illinois Huskies, Jerry Kill, second season at NIU with an 8-9 record. 16th season as a head coach. His last six teams that he's prepared have all gone to bowl games, Bobby. Well, these two outstanding head football coaches are mirror images of themselves. You can't play for Jerry Kill and you can't play for Bill Cubitt unless you're a fundamentally sound football player and have a great work ethic. Tommy Davis, 20. Ricky Kreider, 22. The deep men. The ball's going to come down to one of the up men, one of the big guys, Jason Anye Buagu catches the kick and falls down around the 27-yard line. And that is where Northern Illinois will go on the attack. Western Michigan, if you're scoring at home, won the toss, deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. Chandler Harnish will control the offense for Northern Illinois. You take a look at his numbers throwing the football. Pretty good TD interception ratio, five to one there, Bob. You know, one of the things that's underestimated about this young guy is his athleticism. You know, we've seen him uh, come up big, running the football, scrambling, throwing the ball downfield on the run, rollout, straight drop back. He's got the complete package. Chad Spann on the first handoff of the game makes a man miss and makes nothing out of it, but could have lost two or three yards. Let's take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Village Commons Bookstore. There's the starting offense. Marcus Lewis and Landon Cox, the wide receivers. Landon Cox, a fabulous blocker from his wide receiver spot. Cunningham, Bobby's guy, Kyle Scarb, the big old-fashioned fullback. Nico Brown, although Span got the start at tailback. And then that big offensive line anchored by Eddie Adamski at center, who's playing on a bum ankle. He was knocked out of last week's game at big 65. Jason Anye Buagi. There's the aforementioned Landon Cox makes the catch. Steps out of bounds at the 33. Going to bring up a third and about two, two and a half. Let's take a look at the WMU starters. Prom, by the way, knocked him out of bounds. 
There's the Western Michigan starting defense. Braska, Selinski, Drew Nowak, Weston Pfeiffer. Take a look at their three linebackers right there. Prom, the man who just knocked him out of bounds. And then there's their defensive backfield. Armstrong at strong safety, a big hitter. Harnish, quarterback draw. He is going to be very close to the first down. Depends upon the spot of the football. I will say that he got it, and he did get it. Well, let, let me start out right now talking about my good friend Kyle Scar. This is a quarterback isolation play. Watch 34 right there on 48. 34, Kyle Scar isolation play, one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. That's why Harnish was able to get the first down. Where's the whammo? I like the whammo. It's coming. <laughs> it's early on. It's early on, David. First to 10 set, Harness ducks under center. Hands off to Chad Spann. Ankle tackle. Real nice job by Solinsky. Real solid job on the tackle by Cody Solinsky from his defensive tackle spot. Reached out and grabbed him by the foot and tripped him up. Bringing up a second and eight, so... Two carries for Spann have netted him all of two yards. Good job by the WMU front four. Harnish calling a play at the line. He'll come out of the shotgun this time. Rolls to his left, throws, finds his man. That will be very close to a first down. And it's going to be Marcus Lewis who makes the catch. Deshaun Lawrence there in coverage, number five for Western Michigan. I think this particular player right here, David, speaks to the arm strength of Chandler Harnish. He rolls to his left, puts the ball right on the money, rolls to his left, and he's a right-handed quarterback. That's what the guys that are called the NFL scouts look for. You have all the throws, rolling to your right, rolling to your left, straight drop back, on the run, whatever. Start the H back, the man in motion. Harness hands off Chad Spann. Makes one man miss, tripped up. He'll pick up maybe three, maybe. We'll see where they spot it, maybe closer to two yards on the game, but should be enough to move the sticks, and it is for a Northern Illinois first down. Here's Scarb again, right on number 38, Chris Prom. Good block, good block. Keep your legs going, young man. That little crease, and then you take it. And Cappy, that it, block was a boom. David Lewis and Jamel Berry came up and made the hits for Western Michigan. First and 10 at the 49-yard line of NIU. Harnish, hand back, Span. Span breaks the tackle. Span carrying tackle. Span all the way to the 35. Outstanding run by this young running back. Why his legs kept going. He lowered his shoulder. Great pad level. Great pad level, right there became his own blocker. Yet again, pad under pad, brings his legs, determined, wonderful, wonderful piece of inside running right there. And Dave, when I talk about pad level, it's getting pad under pad on the tackler. Now you've got leverage. You keep the legs going, and you've got a marvelous combination. Add the determination that the young man has and the strength that he has, and you've got a complete running back. All right, we've got a man down for Western Michigan and that is Mitch Zajac, the inside linebacker. So we have got a break. We'll take a break with him. It is 11.29 left first quarter. No score. Huskies on the attack. First to 10 at the 36 when we come back. College life is great, but aren't you sick of living in cramped spaces, lack of privacy, ramen noodles? At University Plaza, we can help. It's like a Chicago high-rise with a friendly family feel. From enjoying the pleasures of private bathrooms and a restaurant-style food court, to keeping fit in a fully equipped fitness center, to lounging in the pool or a hot tub. Experience so much more for less than what you might think. If you've never been here, you owe it to yourself to check us out. University Plaza, big city atmosphere in the heart of NIU. Hey Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations. The Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, 
and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Welcome back. Let's go down to the field. Jim Blaney, the third member of our crew. Jimmy. All right, David, in case anybody's wondering about the weather, temperature is not bad. The rain, it's off and on. It's drizzly. That's not too bad either. I think the biggest issue is going to be the wind. It's steadily shifting around to the north, and it's picking up. And I think we saw evidence of that on the kickoff to start the game, where it only went to the 20-yard line. The guys who are really going to have a problem in this mist are the guys who have visors on their helmets. They're constantly wiping them off, and it's really going to be a problem if this miss continues and it's supposed to. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. Zajac able to walk off under his own power. Good to see. Harnish hands off Span. Span puts his head down, drags tacklers. He will pick up four yards on the play and he will be knocked down right around the 33 yard line. When Mitch Zajac came off the field, David, it looked like he was favoring his right shoulder. Now, he is a sophomore. His backup is a young guy by the name of Woody LeGreer. He's a redshirt freshman. The guy in the middle, the guy in the middle needs to be the heart of the defense, and he needs to be able to make the calls. For a redshirt freshman, that can be kind of tricky, especially in a tough game like this. Scarf, the man in motion again. Play action, Harness going to the air. He's got his man. Give him six. Nothing. Watch the play action as we re re revisit this play. Great play action. You've got the fullback right there looking like he's leading. Good fake by the tailback. Brings up the linebackers. Brings up the free safety. And he runs the route. Just a simple post route going right to that goal post. Good pitch. Good throw. Set up by success with the run. Excellent job. That's Harnish's sixth TD of the season, Palmer's first of the season. And when we come back, we'll show you the replay again. Watch the block up front for the offensive line. Big 74 protecting his QB for the TD. Men, we really got to get in him today. We're going to run 367 wide drag, ice cream soft. He's going to get here, and we're going to scoop him. Q, you look him off, the V over the top. Swallow the frog now. Swallow it, hit the post and score. Now, has everybody got it? All right, let's go. Let's get after it. Oh, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown right there. NIU Husky football. No matter how you say it, there's only one way to experience it live. After every Bears game. Game ends, you flip over to Comcast Sports Center. Every single week, you watch Bears Post Game Live as Dan Jiggins, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller break down the game with me. Expert analysis. They're shooting out and getting into the zone. That's the MO, that's the blueprint, that's what you have to do. Linebackers have to basically step up if they're in the zone coverage. Press conferences and player interviews. What does it taste like, Jim? <laughs> Victory. <laughs> U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live, only on Comcast Sportsnet. When breaking news happens, the Comcast Sportsnet News Team has it covered. Breaking news out of Hallis Hall this afternoon. The Bears have acquired quarterback Jay Cutler in a deal with the Denver Broncos. Congratulations to Derrick Rose, today named the NBA Rookie of the Year. I consider myself, you know, the most blessed man on the face of the earth today. Get all your Chicago sports news when it happens on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. 7-0, Northern Illinois over Western Michigan. 10-31 left, first quarter. Watch the protection up front. Watch Big 74. What a block by Adam Keel, Bob. Well, not only the uh, uh, protection by the offensive line, which is obvious, protection by the running back picking up the blitz. Then the play action, which freezes number 33, Mario Armstrong, the strong safety. He gets turned around. And now it's a simple post pattern with no help over the top for the cornerback, Deshaun Lawrence. Take a look at the scoring drive. It was nine plays. It covered 74 yards, chewed up a big portion of the clock. And the Huskies on top 7-0. They will kick off. Salerno will put it in play out of the back of the end zone. He's kicking downwind. 
wish my tee shots were all downwind. Well, you know, let me just tell you something, David, about that play. Great camera work by our guys, by the way. It was the complete package. It was textbook. It was play action. You had great protection up front. You had blitz pickup. Never take that for granted. And then with the play action, great faking, and then a good route where he made an adjustment when the strong safety came up right up, to, right up the field and bid on the play action, left the entire center of the field open. They ran the post route. Hey, give Harnish a lot of credit for making a great read there also. All right, number three is Tim Hiller. This guy is a real big-time quarterback. He hands off to Brandon West, makes a man miss. And will be knocked down across the 30. Quick rip off of 11 yards for West and move the sticks. Jake Kaufman, the Army veteran, came over and made the hit. I mean, David, these offensive lines, we thought last week Idaho had a huge offensive line they brought here to DeKalb. Western Michigan's offensive line is even bigger. They average about 315 pounds and they're mobile and athletic. Miller looking, first throw, finds his man. Gain of about eight yards for Jordan White. Knocked down about a yard short, yard, yard and a half short. Let's take a look at the starters offensively for the Western Michigan Broncos of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Ponder, White, Arnheim, Stevens, and West, your skill position players, and the guys all over 300 pounds, anchored by that center, number 60, Nick Mitchell. Hand off Brandon West, and he'll be knocked down, but I believe he's got enough to move the sticks for the Broncos. Defensive starters for the NIU Huskies. There's Brandon Vice, Brian Lawson, big DJ Perkle, Jake Coffer we just mentioned, and the man who just made that last tackle, 53, Pat Schiller, the middle linebacker. David Bryant, the free safety, very quick, very aggressive to the football. Quick screen out, and it will be dropped by the wide receiver. White could not haul it in. Gonna bring up a second ten, Bobby. Well, this is a play he should be able to catch this football. What this play is is basically an elongated pitch out. The elongated pitch out, all right, and that's what it is. It's like taking the football and tossing it to a tailback, but instead it's a little bit longer and it's an overhand throw. By the way, Jake Kaufman. I said Army. He was in the Marines. Marines. Sorry, Jake. And two tours in the Middle East, including Iraq. And a real nice tackle in the backfield. Trips him up right at the line for Sean Progar. Number 95, 6'3", 255, a redshirt freshman. It brings up a third and nine going into the win, which will play a factor here today. Rain has stopped, though. Good to see. Killer operate out of the gun. Low snap, Hiller corrals it, looks, throws, finds his man. And that will be enough, I believe, on the spot for a first down. Jordan White, nice job of knowing where, where he was on the field. I've mentioned this to you time and again, David, with your great knowledge of basketball. Basketball term, know where you're, know, where you're at on the floor. Football term, know where you're at on the field. What does it take to move the sticks? Nice job by this young guy. Chris Smith up to make the hit. But White, a real good catch. Real solid throw, showing some arm strength from Hiller. And a first down for Western Michigan. Huge third down play. And off West, Schiller, 53, rolled over and grabbed him. Short gain, maybe two. We'll see where they spot it. You know, I talk about the heart of a defense. Every great defense has to have a heart. Pat Schiller is the heart of the Northern Illinois Husky defense. Look at that play. Look at that play. That's a want-to guy, a guy that wants to make plays. You know when you see, when, when you see that inside linebacker pats his feet just a little bit? You know what he's doing? He's waiting. He's making the read. Then when he, his analysis is over, he attacks the ball for him. Hiller looking, adjust, finds a secondary receiver. I believe it's White again. 
Jordan White makes the catch. Chris Smith again over in coverage. Credit, a credit Hiller with going through an entire progression from right to left. Once again, great protection. Starts out to his right, looks to his left, sees the soft corner. Nice job right there. Good job of making three when different When you reads. watch him go through his progressions, you can tell he's a veteran quarterback. Well, a veteran quarterback with a great offensive line. Empty backfield. Hiller on third down. Quick throw. Got his man. Real solid throw. Corey Hansen came over and made the hit on Ansel Ponder. I mean, this is a big hit. Listen to this. Ooh. And he hung on. Give Ponder a lot of credit. Popped up. Fired up. We mentioned early on, no long drives by Western Michigan with Northerns to hang in there with it. West. Gang tackled, might have picked up a yard. A host of red shirts led by David Bryant, number four, flowing to the play. You look at Jerry Kill. I can assure you, David, what's in, unfolding in front of our eyes here in this game is classic mid-American conference football. It's an impressive drive out of WMU, I'll tell you that. Going into the wind, it's cold. And they've had to make a couple. Hill has had a couple really tough throws. And he has had the ball on the numbers. Glennis Tom Thompson is now in the game at running back. A little misdirection, a little trickeration. And Northern Illinois sniffs it out. Ponder took the pitch on a misdirection play. That big defensive line led by Brian Lawson, 6'3", 272, was not cool. What Hiller did there, David, was he started an option phase. But rather than having a pitch back, he had the, the, the uh, wide receiver come back in the opposite direction and pitched it to him. Sold the option one way and came back with the wide receiver in the other direction. Third and ten. Hiller looking, looking, pressure, throws, and it is caught. Big time throw in the face of getting hit. Excellent job by Arnheim. Robert Arnheim is a sophomore out of Orlando, Florida. Steps up, makes the catch. And if you watch the replay, Hiller was about to get smacked. The term coaches use for that is show great poise. Great poise and experience. Real nice job. Kyrie Daniels, the quarterback out of Kissimmee, Florida, knocked down the wide receiver from Orlando, Florida. Killer hands off. And the pile moves. Western Michigan has it at the just short of the 15-yard line. Again, Brandon West with the carry. Alex Kuba from his linebacker spot, six foot. 212, more of a defensive back playing linebacker. Would you agree at that size? Well, a, a lot of a lot of defenses right now, David. People are looking for, are looking for that. They feel if you know if you got big guys up front and you can keep the offensive linemen off of those linebackers and let those guys run around and make plays. That's a philosophy that's very very much in vogue in, in college football today. West the tail of the tandem. They're going to toss to him and a real solid open field tackle. Tip your cap to Tracy Wilson, sniffed it out, flowed to the play, and dropped it. One of the things we always talk about is open field tackling, a dying art. Tracy Wil Wil Wilson analyzes the play, comes up, doesn't over pursue the play, breaks down, packs his feet just a little bit, gets his head across the bow, knowing that his help is inside. Nice job. Defense is knowing where your help is at. Leverage the ball carrier to the side of your help and let the pursuit come in and clean up the play. It's a third and seven. Hiller asked again to make a play on third down, and he changes the play at the line of scrimmage. He looks. He's pressured. His arm was hit as he throws, and it is incomplete in the end zone. A lot of pressure applied by Northern Illinois on this drive. That one was Brandon Bice, number 56. Chris Smith was in coverage, but watch 56 come flying at the quarterback, and I think 23 may have got a piece of the arm, and 56 finished it up the quarterback off, and there's the cover. You know, I'm not so sure, and we haven't seen this call this year yet, I don't think, offensive pass interference. 
That wide receiver, when he knew that he couldn't catch that football, he got his, uh-oh, a fake. We got a fake field goal try, the toss, and it is going to be short of a first down. Northern Illinois will take over. Potter, the kicker, throwing a pass, and it comes up short for Western Michigan. Pat Schiller all over this play. Pat Schiller, great analysis, and again, great pursuit. Outstanding job by the young guy, 6'2", 229 sophomore, Geneva, Illinois. You can see his home from the top of the stadium, David. Well, here it is. There's the toss and real solid pursuit. Real good pursuit by Northern Illinois as the kicker goes out. The holder, who is a backup QB, excuse me, a wide receiver, Robert Arnheim, makes the throw to Potter. And good job by the Husky defense to flow to that play. Well, Pat Schiller showed some great speed. You know, it's uncanny, David. You put a 40 a clock on a guy and he runs a 48, 47, 40, maybe a 49 or even a 5040. But you put a helmet on him and shoulder pads and pads, and he gets in the game and he has what we call contact speed. And that was a great example of that by Pat Schiller. You know what? One measurable that is un cannot be done by a pro scout, and that's the size of a guy's heart. Pat Schiller right there showed a lot of heart in that play, regardless of his 40 pounds. Harness out of the gun, barks out a play at the line. Hands off to Miko Brown. Nope, he's going to tuck it back and keep it. And Western Michigan sniffed this one out very effectively because Bob, Coach Kubit and his staff watched a lot of tape and they saw that play run a lot against Idaho. That's what makes this such a great, uh, you know, a great matchup because of the two outstanding coaches, hardcore fundamentalists, guys that can coach their coaches, coaches, as they say. A couple of guys, 97, Freddie Bishop, one of the men there along, I think, with Chris Prom, who flowed to the play and made the hit. Third down and six for Northern Illinois. Adamski to snap. Shotgun for Harnish, empty backfield pressure, throws, and nearly intercepted. Heck of a defensive play by Woody Legreer, the linebacker, 6'1", 241 out of Rochelle, Georgia. Nearly had a pick six here. Tips that up to himself and he'd be gone. Well, Harnish threw that ball into double coverage. He'd like to have that one back. They'll talk about that when they get over the sideline. That's one of the deals where you pull the ball down and you have the athleticism that Harnish has. Take off downfield, get what you can. All right. Stevens is deep for Western Michigan to receive the kick. And Northern Illinois will cover it right around midfield. That's where the Broncos will go on attack. Trailing 7-0 here in the Dallas. I'm a forensic scientist for the Illinois State Police. I'm a demographics and mapping analyst. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. All the NIU faculty had real-world experience that they translated into their classrooms. The faculty at NIU are fantastic. They hooked me up with a great internship out at Fermi Lab. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. I'm Kellen Hunter. I'm Amanda Crompart. I'm Marcus Lashock. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. I thought it was crazy feeding in the fall. I always feed in the fall, but it's the best time. Feed your lawn in the fall. The fall feeding makes all the difference in the world. What the fall feeding does is build the roots. That's when the roots sort of want nutrition. I get my lawn Scott's Winter Garden. It's like a root building machine. It builds your lawn from the roots up. Next year, you get this. The stronger the roots, the stronger the lawn all year long. The best time to feed is when it'll do the most good. There's no substitute for the fall feeding, trust me. It is the best thing you could do for your lawn. I use Scott's Winter Garden. Welcome back to DeKalb, where Northern Illinois leading Western Michigan 7-0 late in the first quarter. That trip by Western Michigan into the red zone was their 20th of the year. That's second best in the MAC. And by the way, Northern Illinois, they've been there 19 times. But here's the rest of the story. Northern first in the league at converting those red zone trips into points. They're 18 for 19. Western Michigan 13th in the league. They are now just 12 of 20 after not making it on the fake field goal. David, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. So the Huskies 
will go back on defense. The Broncos will try and even this game, trailing 7-0 with a buck 35 left in the first quarter. David Kaplan and Bob Kamel with you and our crew up here in the booth. Hiller hit. Hiller pulls it back, finds his man, makes a heck of a play, and West will be knocked down at the 40. This was an outstanding play by that quarterback. That's called experience, and again, I can't overemphasize the use of the word poise. Watch the pressure that he's under. He stands tall in the pocket, never gives up. He's strong. He's got a touch. Gets the football over the top. Right now, we're going to see great, a quick release under duress. A quick release. Nice job by Brandon West finding the soft spot in the underneath zone. Never take that for granted. David Bryant came up number four and made the hit, but a super play by Tim Hill. Hand off to West, puts his head down, they'll move the pile. Now Brandon West, as I was doing my game prep, looking at the numbers on this guy, he is all-purpose yards, number one in MAC history. Kick return yards, number one in MAC history. I mean, you talk about a guy that can get it done on special teams, running the football, and he's the leading active player in all of NCAA football as Hiller throws and finds White again. Short of a first down, be about a yard short. He's leading among all active NCAA football players in all-purpose yards, kick return yards, and number of kick returns. You know, every recruiting class would like to take about three like him, because that's like getting nine guys. I mean, when a guy can do all those different things, and you know the thing is, one of the things that's critically important is you have to stay healthy. You have to stay healthy. You have to take care of yourself if you can play that kind of football. Move the sticks. That should be enough for a Western Michigan first down. I mean, they had everybody lined up to that side of the field except for Coach Kubit. I mean, they were all there, David. All right, we've got to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll tell you about number three, Tim Hiller. Who's the most famous guy from his hometown? We'll tell you about that when we come back on CSN. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons Bookstore, you're entering Husky Country. VCB is the official site for NIU Athletics, featuring the NIU Husky logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or fan of NIU Athletics, the Village Commons Bookstore is your official Husky headquarters. Visit us at the stadium on game day or at our store in DeKalb at 901 Lucinda or on the web at www.vcbs.com. Men, we really got to get in them today. We're going to run 367 wide drag, ice cream soft. He's going to get here, and we're going to scoop him. Q, you look him off. The V over the top. Swallow the frog now. Swallow it. Hit the post and score. Now, has everybody got it? All right, let's go. Let's get after it. Oh, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown right there. NIU Husky football. No matter how you say it, there's only one way to experience it. Live. Good stuff, huh? Oh, whoa, that's the last wing. Yeah. Did you want it? If you insist. Not so fast, Jerry. Now, this should be based on merit, and I am the official spokesman of Wingstop. Well, that's right. You keep talking about them, and I'll keep eating them. <laughs> Nobody does wings quite like Wingstop. Whether it's regular or boneless, they're always sauced and tossed fresh with every order in one of our nine exciting flavors. It's no wonder we're selling over a million wings a day. Wingstop, the wing experts. NIU football at Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by University Plaza. The NIU Bookstore, Air One Wireless, American National Bank of DeKalb County, and NIUHuskies.com. All right, welcome back to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. Western Michigan on the move. Northern Illinois with a 7 0 lead as we start second quarter action here. Western Michigan has it first and 10 at the NIU 29 yard line. Hiller, straight drop, looks, throws, incomplete. Missed his man. He was looking for Matt Stevens, his tight end, 6'4, 249. A look at the first quarter stats. Bob, anything jump out at you? 
Well, passing yards there is really uh, fairly close. Time of possession fairly close. I think the, uh, the stats are indicative of the, of the score of the, of the football game at the present time. First quarter Very stats well team. brought to you by Kishwaukee Community Hospital. So there is Tim Hiller, the most famous resident of Orville, Ohio, one Robert Montgomery Knight. Same hometown as the legendary basketball coach, Bob Knight, and same hometown as the company that makes Smucker's Jelly. I'm a big Smucker's fan. Love PB and Jane more. Somehow I know somewhere along the line you're going to get some free Smucker's Jelly. Yes, if the marketing director of the Smucker's company is listening, you have the best jelly in America. Uh, there's a look at the MAC leaders at quarterback. Chandler Harness, pretty solid rating. And two guys at the bottom of the list, Hiller and Lefevre there, Talk two about big time players. Conference. And the amazing thing is, Dan Lefevre at Central, he's from Downers Grove, right down the street from DeKalb. Hiller looks, throws, dumps it off, finds his man, makes one man miss. He will come up short of a first down on third and 10. Caleb Ravenel will come up short. And so, this Western Michigan Town downwind. Brandon Weiss came over, made the hit. The form of a screen pass, David. You have the Z or the wide receiver to the flanker side. Run underneath. Offensive linemen set back when they get downfield. John Potter is going to attempt the field goal of 39 yards. And this one will sail up and good. Splits the uprights. Potter nails it, and with 14-13 left, second quarter on homecoming weekend, 09 in DeKalb. It's the Huskies, seven, and the Broncos, three. So far, it has saved us over $70,000. When we go to purchase something, we always think of direct buy first. If you live on the East Coast, West Coast, or anywhere in between, there is now a way for you to buy virtually everything you need for your home without paying traditional retail store markups. You'll save up to 50% and more off the items you need for your home and family. Join the hundreds of thousands from across North America who are already saving more than ever at direct buy. When we found out that we could save this money. Direct buy was the only way to go. I'm not expecting to be rich. I'm going to be middle class the rest of my life. And to, be, to me, this was a, a very easy way to live above my means. Act now. Call the number on your screen to receive your free visitor's pass to your local direct buy showroom. Plus, you'll receive a free copy of the insider's guide to buying direct. You do have an alternative to retail store markup. Call to get your free visitor's pass and learn how to be a member of direct buy. Call now. Second quarter here in DeKalb, Northern Illinois leading Western Michigan 7-3. We are joined on the sidelines by Jerry Rich. He and his wife Betty honored alums today here on Homecoming. But if you recognize the name, it's because Jerry is the proprietor, founder, driving force behind Rich Harvest Farms, which was the site of the Solheim Cup just a few months ago. And talk about that event because more so than the competition, which was wonderful, it really generated a lot of interest in your golf course, a lot of interest in the game of golf, and just really a good feeling for this area of Illinois. Uh, it did, Jim, and probably one of the most important things that we did is we had over 4,000 high school girls that played golf. And of course, the NIU, all of the uh, uh, the girls and boys golf teams were all part of the event, so it was really special. Talk a little bit, if you will, about the involvement that you still have with this university, especially in having the men's and women's golf teams play at your golf course. Uh, we do. Uh, the home course for the Huskies boys and girls are Rich Harvest. In fact, uh, they were out qualifying for an event up at Skokie today, and it was dark last night and raining, and they were out there playing, and they just absolutely love it. Plus, we built an indoor practice facility, which is made out of artificial grasses like you have on your field here, and so both teams practice there all winter long. Jerry, thanks for your time. Congratulations on a wonderful Solheim Cup. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. All right, David, back to you. Jerry, thank you. How did you guys get a shot of my shot that landed a foot from the pin? That doesn't happen for me. For some reason, I can't hit the green. His course, Rich Harvest Farms, you've never played it. I have. Let me tell you something. It is unbelievable. Phenomenal track. Yeah, that's me right there. Tall, thin, lanky, 
Yeah, that's me. So you'll be taking your, your Smucker's jelly over to this golf course? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bring my PB&J with Smucker's jelly to Rich Harvest Farms, where I'll hopefully have a comp tea time, right? <laughs> Empty backfield on second and 10 for Chandler Harnish and the NIU Huskies. Quick toss to Miko Brown. Miko Brown up the sideline. Miko Brown ducks out of bounds, and I think he is short. Flag, David. That was what the proverbial bunch formation. Four people there, and what it amounted to was a screen pass. Holding on the offense, number 80. It's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat, second down. They are going to get Landon Cox, who's one of the better blocking wide receivers in the country. Well, let's see if we can find the infraction. There it is right there, and David. You, there it is no right there. No question about it. How many times have you heard me say, if you keep your hands within the framework of the body, you can hold all you want. When those hands get up on the shoulder pads or up underneath the rib area and the, the officials the can helmet. see them in the helmet, that's when you're going to be called. Get the hands inside and you'll be fine. Second and 11. Bunch Same formation, formation again. Just flip it over to the other side. They're going to run away from it to Harnish. Cuts back, falls down. And a real nice job by the Western Michigan defense led by the big nose guard and D-tackle Cody Solinsky. You know, some football play action passes are cumulative and consecutive. And what I mean by that, David, is you throw that pass to the left side, and it's somewhat successful with the exception of the penalty. Now you show it to the right side and come back the other way, hoping that the pursuit will go to, toward the bunch formation and Chandler Harnish to take off off the field to the left side of his offensive line. Northern Illinois so far two for three on third down today. This is a tough one, third and 13. Harnish drops, looks, throws, dumps it off to Miko Brown. Miko Brown into the open field. Miko Brown will be dragged down just short, I believe. We'll see where they spot this football. Watch number 74 on this play, the right tackle, Adam Keel. Talk about big and athletic and only a sophomore. Watch him move his feet and usher the, pa the, the pass rusher to the outside, then move his feet back to the inside. Great call. Good job of wide receivers going downfield and blocking. You know, I can't say enough about, you know, you mentioned Landon Cox. These wide receivers are so well coached when it comes to blocking. Very fundamentally sound. You know what happens, David? If you want to be a complete wide receiver, you have to be able to block. And if you don't want to block, and I'll tell you the other thing, you talk about gaining the respect of those big offensive linemen on Monday. They're sitting in there watching film. They see you go downfield, throw that extra block. That's how you get that respect. Nebraska made the tackle, but it was just enough by the nose of the football. A first down for Northern Illinois at the 41 of the Huskies. Hand off to Miko Brown, picking his way, making a man miss, and knocked down right around the 50-yard line to bring up a second and about a yard and a half. Great job here with Chandler Harnish carrying out the fake actually after the handoff. Watch him. Here's the handoff, there's the fake coming around. Look at that corner running with the wide receiver in the opposite direction. My goodness, and watch the lateral crease in that defense and he takes that hole, Miko Brown. Keeps his feet moving. Again, becomes his own blocker with great pad level. Miko Brown, single back set, and we've got a whistle. And let's see if we've got a timeout on the field. I believe it is a timeout, David. Yep, Jerry Kill calls a timeout. David, we're going to take that timeout with them. 11.44 to go. Second quarter, Huskies and Bronco in a good one. I'm a forensic scientist with the Illinois State Police. I'm a demographics and mapping analyst. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. All the NIU faculty had real-world experience that they translated into their classrooms. The faculty at NIU are fantastic. They hooked me up with a great internship out at Fermi Lab. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. I'm Kellen Hunter. I'm Amanda Crompart. I'm Marcus Lashock. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. 
This year, the thrill returns to the hardwood as the Chicago Bulls ignite on the west side. Catch all the excitement and high def on one network. Comcast Sportsnet, bringing you the best pre- and post-game coverage with former NBA star Kendall Gill and CSN analyst Mark Schanowski. Hello again, everyone. Welcome into Toyota Bulls post-game live. Plus, breaking news, locker room interviews, and live press conferences. There's no reason to miss any of your favorite team's coverage this season when you have Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Alongside a, a, a damp and soggy Beltonville Mountain. I don't mind being out in the rain. I don't care about the hair. I don't care about sitting out in the rain, the mud on the shoes. But it was actually going down my back. I think that was the disappointing thing because they were ruining a nice jacket. And nobody cared. Not one person. Not the guys in the truck. And certainly not Todd next to me, Hollinsworth, and Pat Boyle. They just tilted their umbrellas and said, the, you know, I like the hell with this guy. And they just let it run down my back. All right, 7-3, early in the second quarter. The wind has picked up just a bit. It's a little chillier, but the rain seems to have cleared, at least for the time being. We've got a second and one, maybe one and a half, call it a long one. Harnish with Miko Brown, the single back set, landed Cox, number 80, in motion. Hand off to Miko Brown, and he picks his way, and he will have enough for a Northern Illinois first down. Fresh four for the Huskies. Well, we saw the graphic just before that play. Number one in rushing in the Mid-American Conference. Number three in rush defense, and number one in turnover margin. Why, do you, why are you a good football team at defending the run? Who do you play more than anybody else? You play against yourself from Monday through Friday every week. If you can rush the football, if you're a good rushing team, chances are you'll defend the run better than most teams will also. Hand up again, Miko Brown tries to get outside, does, gets to the corner, and is knocked out of bounds after a gain of, we'll call it four yards. Let us go to the sidelines for more on that rushing statistic. Here is Jim Blaine. All right, David, thank you very much. And just to amplify what Bob said, I consider myself to some degree to be a football Neanderthal. I don't care how sophisticated the offenses get. I think it comes down to run the ball, stop the run, take care of it. You're usually going to be pretty successful. It's a pretty simple game sometimes. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. If I coach again, I've just hired my offensive coordinator. job in traffic for Reed Cunningham, the big senior tight end. Makes the catch and moves the sticks all the way down inside the Western Michigan 20. Not a great throw, but an outstanding catch. Well, what, what happened here? Two things that you see right here. First of all, Miko Brown, great job with blitz pickup. Second of all, the focus of Reed Cunningham is being harassed. They're coming up with the football. Two, three guys looks the football all the way down at this midsection and comes down with it. He has to choke his motor down just a little bit. Why he caught that football? He caught it with his eyes and he had great focus. Hey, hey, nice give, job. Give Harness credit. The ball was off target just a bit, but he was pressured heavily and he got it to where it had to go. Miko Brown knocked down after a gain of two and a half. What that last play though, David, Miko Brown, outstanding job of blitz pickup. Because otherwise the play Harness doesn't is on go. The He's done. The play doesn't go. Very unselfish. I talked about respect in, in the meeting on Monday. You know, those offensive linemen, they want to see if those backs will block also. Woody LeGreer was over to make the tackle for WMU. It's a second, and they'll call it a long seven for the Huskies. Chad Spann back in a tailback, and he will be dragged down. Real good job by Freddie Bishop. I mean, he swallowed that play up quick. Chad Spann comes in, Miko Brown goes out. One of the great luxuries that Northern Illinois has in credit the recruiting office. These two young guys have like abilities. One comes in, one goes out. The play calling doesn't have to change. Why? Because they have like abilities. Northern Illinois 13th in the country in trips inside the red zone showing productivity. 18 for 19 they've scored 12 touchdowns six field goals and they are in the red zone why you achieve what you emphasize you work on red zone offense day in and day out 
Harness, hands off Span, makes one man miss with a great move. Stumbles his way, knocked out at the four yard line. First and goal, NIU. Woody LeCreer over again, number 94. To escort him to the sideline, but a real good cut and a good move. Look at that cut, and that turns the corner. David, your guy, Jason Unibiago, watch the big guy coming out here blocking in space. Doesn't need to knock the guy down. Just a little chip and then let the running back make the cut off whatever the block may be. Three back set. They'll hand it off to Chad Spann. Puts his head down, moving his legs, driving, driving. Did he get in? He did not get in. He will be short inside the one yard line. Well, you talk about a guy continuing to move his feet. That was Chad Spann on that play. Regardless of the position, Chad Spann, great example right there. But you watch the lead back moving his feet. You watch those offensive linemen. Look at them, bringing their legs, pad under pad. Great pad level by them also. If you're pad under pad, you've got leverage and you've got a chance. A host of white and gold there to knock him down short of the end zone. Spotted at the one. Handed off Spann again. Spann to the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. Thank you, Joe Pollock, Adam Peel, and Eddie Adamski. The whole right side of that Husky offensive line. A great push. And that's where it gets tough, David. Those defensive linemen, they are down, way down in their stances. And the only way to beat them is to get below them like we did right, like they did right here. And there's Unibiago pulling around inside the one yard line and taking out a linebacker. Spans seventh touchdown of the season. Salerno's PAT is perfect. And it's 14-3 Huskies. One more look as we go to break. That big right side of the O-line paving the way for Chad Spann to find Cater. College life is great, but aren't you sick of living in cramped spaces, lack of privacy, ramen noodles? At University Plaza, we can help. It's like a Chicago high-rise with a friendly family feel. From enjoying the pleasures of private bathrooms and a restaurant-style food court, to keeping fit in a fully equipped fitness center, to lounging in the pool or a hot tub. Experience so much more for less than what you might think. If you've never been here, you owe it to yourself to check us out. University Plaza, big city atmosphere in the heart of NIU. This all started the year 2005 when the Sox got on a roll. My daughter was convinced that it was because we bought peanuts in the third inning. So every third inning before the Sox went to bat, I had to go buy peanuts from a vendor, not from a stand. It had to be from a vendor. In 2006, after the Sox started to lose some games, we stopped buying Lucky Peanuts. My daughter was convinced that's the reason that they didn't get back to the World Series was we broke the tradition. We were back to buying Lucky Peanuts last year. I'm just whatever it takes. 14-3, 7.53 left second quarter. Huskies getting ready to kick off here on a homecoming Saturday in DeKalb. A look at the scoring drive. It was 12 plays. It chewed up 69 yards over a time of six minutes and 20 seconds. And it completes with Chad Spann finding the end zone for his seventh TD of the season. A one yard touchdown run. Let's take a look at the homecoming court. There they are. There's your king and queen. Is that Woody Harrelson? Is he a student here now? Didn't it look like him? Yeah, it did. Who's Woody Harrelson? He's a baseball player. Second ball. No. Hawk. That was Hawk Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. White men could jump and kingpin. Here's the deal about that drive. Six minutes and 20 seconds. That was six minutes and 20 seconds that Tim Hiller, the quarterback for the Broncos, was a spectator, David. Long driving kick come down at the goal line. And that is where Western Michigan will start, right at the 25-yard line. Nice, solid return by Ponder. Here's a situation where the play calling by, by Coach Kubit. You know, here's where you have to try to start to get into some type of rhythm. And don't become impatient. You know, play, 
run plays that were successful in the past. Stick with your game plan. Don't get outside of your comfort zone. Don't force the issue. New quarterback. We will find out just what's going on. Brandon West was forced out of bounds right at the first down marker. But here, here's the deal with that. They wanted to run a little bit of option football right here. Drew Birdie. It's almost, David, it's almost like the, the Wildcat deal, so to speak. Okay? It's almost like the Wildcat deal. Birdie will come back out, and here comes Hill. Run a little bit of option. You should always run just and, even And here. you don't have great throwing quarterback. Doesn't have to take any pounding. No, he doesn't. The other thing it does, it forces future opponents to prepare for option football, which defensive coordinators do not like to do. Hiller throws, Ponder's got it. That will be enough to move the sticks for the Broncos and a first down. Well, what it is, it's a bit of a changeup. Patrick George over. Bit of a changeup. Now, the next time you bring him in, you run the play action fake because you're thinking you don't let him throw the football. And you let him throw the football. You're learning, David. There we go. That was, you know, just as well as you taught me the 1 3 1 defense in basketball. And I wanted to do the 2 3 1 because I thought that'd be more. They sent us to the other end of the field. Yeah, go ahead. We'll let you know if we need you. That's where you learn to golf. That's pretty much it. Hiller. Fires, throws, incomplete off the hands of Ponder. Good job by Patrick, Patrick Georgia. George again, number the 33. Closed on the play very quickly, and just like that, it'll be a third down and five Patrick, for Western Michigan. A captain leader from Gordon Tech High School. And also plays the center. There you go. Gordon Tech, home of former NBA coach Dick Versace. And his goal in life is to be a detective. Pretty noble. Hiller looking, looking, throws, has his man. Football came out. We'll see what they call this play. This will be interesting. Did they call it? He did recover it. I believe but will the they call it a incomplete pass or not? No, they're going to say that the ground caused the ball Arm to come high. out. The ground caused the ball to come out, which is not a fair. Amazing in this day and age in college football, the way they get the substitutions in and the defense has to match up. It becomes a chess game. And there you go again. Big hit on the option. West will go down. Let me tell you something. They ran the same play again, and Birdie was pounded. Spencer Williamson, watch this hit. He reads the pitch and Bam, did he get a licking. That's why Tim Hiller doesn't run that play. That's exactly right. <laughs> Tim Hiller said, you want to run that, get him in there. <laughs> Hiller, looking, looking, pressured, throws, intercepted. Tipped and intercepted off the hands of Ponder. And into the hands, I'll see if I can get a number of the man who made the pick. Tip drill, turnover margin. That's why Kyrie Northern Daniels. Illinois is first in the conference in turnover margin. Kyrie Daniels was the man who hauled in the tip pass. And that will stop the Western Michigan drive. You'll take a look at it here, Bob. Tip drill. When you run to the football, I talk about pursuit, David. Regardless if it's, if it's pursuit and tackling pursuit or just running to the football versus the passing game. When you run to the ball, good things will happen. Kyrie Daniels' first interception of his career. Harnish. Hand off Miko Brown, and he's knocked down. He'll pick up, see where they spot this. He'll give him a gain of three. He'll be a second and seven. Woody LeGreer came over again from his backward spot. 6'1", 241. Just a freshman out of Rochelle, Georgia. David, he's doing a nice job of backing up mid stage that came out of the end where I said looked like a, a shoulder injury. You know, it had apprehensions a little bit because he is a true freshman, but he's coming up big. He's growing up as the game goes on. Harnish gonna keep it. 
Fake the throw, keeps it, turns it upfield, and he'll go out of bounds. Ushered out by Armstrong, but not before he picks up enough for an NIU first down. The strength of Arnish is very is a great example here. Cody Selinski basically almost had him in the grasp. Arnish right there, kicks out with, with the with the tack, the would-be tackler, and takes off down the field. 6'2, 213 pounds, uh, this young Chandler Harnish. Just a sophomore out of Bluffton, Indiana. Harness hands off Miko Brown. Cuts it back up. We've got a flag that flies, I believe. It's going to, going to be a hole. Did they get big 65, Jason Anye Buagu? I don't think his side of the line. Holding on the offense, number 47. To ten yard get penalty, Kyle Scar. Again, my guess is Kyle Scarp reaches out here. Sorry, Connor Flayhigh Kyle is going to be the man. And there's going to there be the hold is. right there. That's not a hold, that's a tackle. Well, I doubt well, he'll get uh, points for that in the meeting on Monday. 47, Connor Flayhigh, the man that... Guilty of the infraction, so it'll be a first and 20 now for the Huskies. Harnish, option to Miko Brown. Miko Brown cuts it up inside. Miko Brown makes one man miss. Miko Brown is up the sideline, dancing out of bounds. After a big gain all the way down to the 29-yard line. But talk to me about the outstanding effort downfield by Adam Peel. Adam and Peel Cox. initially landed Cox at the line of scrimmage. And then Peel as the ball went downfield. Watch Landon Cox. Right there, good ha hands inside, as I mentioned before. You're not going to get called for clipping or holding there. Now we see Keel downfield, the big fella, blocking in space, bringing his legs. Great effort, second effort. What a block by 80 and 74 to set that play up. Hand off Miko Brown, picking his way and knocked down at the 25-yard line, a gain of four, second and six. This is the type of football that Jerry Kill's team had well, to run early on. We talked open. about it. You, you, when, you, when you're a, a playing against a threat like Tim Hiller and his supporting cast, the best way to defend against him is to make Keep sure him he's on a bench. spectator. No question. And this is this is uh, this is Jerry Kill type of football. This is where Jerry Kill excelled at Southern Illinois University and brought the system back up here to DeKalb, Illinois, and continues to run it. Great continuity within his staff. A bunch of guys that have been with them for a while. Chad Spann behind Connor Flayhive, the fullback. Spann will rumble down to the 23. Right, that's a little bit of a play action pass here. Not a big deal. Just to move the sticks. Pritchard a safe play. If it's not there, take off with the football yourself. Or come back perhaps with a quarterback run. Or would you sprint the quarterback out with a run pass option? Well, I think right now one of the things you really have to consider is, as we mentioned before, you know, is take care of the football. Play high, man in motion. There is your quarterback draw. Harness knocked down. Going to be close. I think he's got it, David. Jason Unibiago, great job again of pulling around and looking for the linebacker. Good call. I think he's going to be short. Yep, they're going to spot him short. Real nice job by Pritchard, number 35, to wrap him up and stop him just short. The Huskies look like they're going for it. One of the things here is, is to line up in the, in the set where you have the three tight end set to one side and run it at the left side, Western Michigan's defensive line. That's where they seem to be vulnerable. Huskies will run the play clock down and take a timeout. We're going to stay right here with them. Fourth down conversions, three of four on the year for Northern Illinois. Well, there it is. I mean, Western Michigan, 50% on fourth down conversions. Northern Illinois, 75%. 
again, David, you achieve what you emphasize. You you coach fourth down. You coach fourth down plays. You have your offensive line coach probably who's your short yardage coordinator come up with plays where it's not only scheme, but what personnel am I going to attack? And what I've seen here thus far today, they're gonna, if they run the football, it's going to be the Northern Illinois right, Western Michigan's left side. That's where they seem to be getting the most yardage. Coming up at the half, we'll have stats, we'll have highlights, more insight from Bob. Plus, Jim Blaney will talk with Carol Owens, the outstanding women's basketball coach here at Northern Illinois, former Notre Dame. Absolutely, she was an assistant at Notre Dame, at Notre Dame under Muffet McGraw, did a great job, had an opportunity to come here to be a head coach. I've known Carol for years. She's an outstanding person. David, and perhaps you can elaborate on this. She has won four Olympic medals. Correct, and she was a standout player here at Northern. At Northern. And, and that, that level of ladies basketball that she coached with those four Olympic, uh, uh, that's kind of an Olympic subdivision, if you will. But the fact of the matter is she's won four medals for the United States of America. All right, here we go on fourth and short for the Huskies. They're going to give it to Spann, and Spann's got it. Spann is headed to the end zone. Touchdown. Give him six. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. What an outstanding run. Excellent blocking, and the Huskies have broken this one open. Pending the PAT, it's 20 to 3. Great tailbacks when they get on a roll. When they get on a roll, they seem to improve as the game goes on. And as we mentioned, David, they attack the left side of Western Michigan's defensive line. That's where Western Michigan has to make some defensive adjustments at the half, shore up that side, bring a linebacker up, maybe rotate the, uh, the, the personnel. Let's get a look at it again. Watch the right side blocking here by, you know, Eddie Adamski. Unibiago comes around again and holds. And now it's just a matter of being a want-to guy. Watch the blocking up front. Now see David right there, 74 and 72, Pollock and Keel, they're pad under pad. Then one comes off and goes up on the linebacker. How about the block by 65, Jason Anye Buagu? Pulling and blocking in well, space. Pulled out and then got a seal and opened that hole up for Chad Spann, and he did the rest. That's 307 pounds coming around that way with a full head of steam, and you're a linebacker? Hello. <laughs> and I remember watching him as a freshman. He was a you know, slower, chunkier kid. He has now developed into a big-time player. Jason Anye Buago, a senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana, 6'2", A monster up there. Second team all back last year, honor roll student. High school captain, the whole package. Kick's gonna come down right around the two yard line. Pritchard's got it. Pritchard is up toward the 30, makes one man miss, and will be knocked down at the 31 yard line, and that with 108 left is where Hiller and company will go to work. Jocks from his linebacker spot, filling in on special teams today, comes up and makes the hit. J young Jason right there getting a little bit of coaching. Coach, I can, I, I can get that linebacker. You block down and just let me come around. You know, this, you know, they say, when do you, you coach the entire game? You make adjustments. I don't, Jason doesn't look like he's a, uh, too, too tired there after a half of football. Hiller going down the field, throws, has got his man. Arnheim made the catch. Great catch. One of Kyrie Daniels' great throw. I'm a bit surprised that the Broncos are huddling here. I would think they'd be kind of in a hurry, hurry phase. Good throw, good catch, good concentration. Good job of getting your uh, foot down. Hiller looking, pressured, steps up, makes a man miss, throws, and incomplete. Hiller likes the side. Well, it, it, that, that again, that's where you, I, you know, you, you never stop coaching, you never assume anything. You never assume anything. You're coaching the entire football game. Get out of bounds. We want to get into a hurry, hurry phase. We want to move the ball. You know, we obviously have to move the ball. Let's get some points before we go in. Field goal or touchdown. Hiller looking, throws, and missed West. 
Uh, he was under duress there, yeah, David. A lot of duress. Corey Hansen. And as well as DJ Perkle. And DJ Perkle was the man who put the pressure on up front. The ball would, he still could have been, he, he, he basically underthrew the football. Northern right now, talk about what the mo uh, momentum and you know how you can't emphasize it enough. And it, it is contagious. It goes from the offensive side of the football to the defensive side of the football to the kicking game, the entire sideline. Third and ten. Hiller got time. Now he's pressured. Throws as he's hit. He was sandwiched by two guys. Brian Lawson, number 92. And number 95, Sean Progar. Take a look at the pressure. He had no chance. Well, here, this is what you see here is, again, pass rushing is effort. It's continuous aggression. You lower your shoulder. You try every move you, 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 that you can possibly make. But you know why these guys have fresh legs? They haven't been on the field all that, all that often today, David. That's the difference between this week and last week. They've got fresh legs. They can rush the passer. Tommy Davis is deep to get Armour's punt. Driving kick, he is not going to touch it. It bounces, it will roll and keep rolling and keep rolling inside the five. So with 34 and a half seconds left, the Huskies will take a knee, no doubt. Here. A very prudent move, and I'll tell you what, that ball was flip-flopping around, it looked like it got caught into the wind, kind of became a knuckle ball. With 34 seconds left in the clock, that doesn't hurt one bit. Let it roll all the way down to the one if you have to. Now just protect the football, go in, make your adjustments, and come out in the second half. What's going to happen adjustment-wise, again, as I mentioned before, Steve Morrison, the outstanding defensive coordinator, was an outstanding linebacker at the University of Michigan. He's the defensive coordinator for Western Michigan. Go inside, find out what's going on on the left side of our defensive front, and make adjustments from there. They'll give it to Miko Brown, and he will pick his way for what will probably be the final play to have unless Western grabs a timeout. I think they'll let the clock run out. One of the things, Miko Brown right there, the and, and not to take anything away from him. Right there, run with two hands on the football. I don't want to say don't run for a touchdown, but you know what I, what I am saying is you're in a situation right here where you don't want to put the football in harm's way. Cover it with both hands, get what you can, and live to play another play. Now the Broncos still have two more timeouts. So very prudent move by Coach Cubitt. Some coaches would say, just get me to the locker room and let me make adjustments. But he's gonna force Northern Illinois to have to play football. You know, Bill Cubitt is an outstanding football coach. He is also an outstanding man. He and his family donated $50,000 to the academic support at Western Michigan University. $50,000. That's stepping up and doing the right thing. Wow. And I can assure you the head coaches of this conference are not in that million dollar bracket when it comes no. to pick. And off to Miko Brown. Miko Brown up the sideline. And Miko Brown will pick up a first down all the way out to the 31 yard line. I will tell you, this offensive line coached by uh, Coach Limegrover from Northern Illinois University is just a, so fundamentally sound. I mentioned in the past, Lime, uh, Coach Limegrover is a graduate of the University of Chicago. Miko may have banged up his wrist on that play. He comes out, and that will be the final play of the first half of football. And a good half if you're a Husky fan. Broncos need to regroup. Huskies in command, 21-3. We'll check in with Jim Blaney in a moment. He will talk with Northern Illinois head coach Jerry Kill, get his impressions on what he saw in the first 30 minutes of football. And don't forget, women's basketball coach Carol Owens will be with Jim in just a couple of minutes. Plus, we'll have Bobby's expert analysis and what to look for in the second half. We can give you a little flavor, a little taste of homecoming. The band will be on it's the like field. A homecoming for you and I, it, of sorts. Yeah, you and I used to work here. That's absolutely correct. Way back in the 80s, you were... Okay, here we go. The football assistant, I was the basketball assistant. I thought we were going to make a reference to... Ladies and age. gentlemen, 
All right, let's go to Jim Blaney with Jerry Kill. All right, thank you very much, David. Jerry, for your defense, the best thing they have going right now is the offense and the way they're chewing up clock and moving the ball up and down the field. Well, that's what we'll have to continue to do. I mean, we, we have to keep their offense on the boundary or we're going to struggle. You know, Hiller's too good a football player. So we got to continue and hope that we can continue to run the football like we did in the first half. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, David, back to you. I All thought right. that was Jim running off with the dog there for a minute. That's what I thought. Well, there you have it. Run the football, as you said, in our keys to the game. Huskies have done that very well, and they are in command by 18. We'll be back with our halftime festivities. After this, I come and report the game. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Larry English, you were just selected in the first round by San Diego in the pro football draft. Where are you going to go? I'm going to Fatty's. Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official NIU pre- and post-game headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our high-definition big screens or enjoying some of our famous grilled food in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. It's all at Fatty's Pub and Grill, located just south of Husky Stadium on West Lincoln Highway in DeKalb. That clerk just called you ma'am. Demands take five Pilates classes a week. Demands drive a Mitsubishi Lancer Sport back with magnesium paddle shifters. No man, they certainly do not. A sports car that's into whatever you're into. The all new 2010 Mitsubishi Lancer Sportback. It's different for a reason. For a limited time, get the Lancer Sportback with 0% APR financing for 48 months. This season, the Blackhawks are back for revenge with some new faces, but the same goal. The Stanley Cup. Chicago's leading sports network, Comcast Sportsnet, brings you all the action in high definition with the best pre- and post-game coverage with former hockey pro Steve Conroy. Plus, breaking news, locker room interviews, and live press conferences. This season, your home for Chicago Blackhawks coverage starts here on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Thursday nights, get ready for the most in-depth coverage on your Chicago Bears. Join Countdown to Kickoff, presented by Grossinger, with Bears star running back Matt Forte, defensive end Alex Brown, and 85 Bear Tom Thayer as they break down every angle before the weekend's big matchup. Get analysis from the primary source, your Chicago Bears. Plus, this all-star crew answers questions directly from you, the Chicago Bears fan. Don't miss Countdown to Kickoff, presented by Grossinger, Thursday nights at 11, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to Husky Stadium, where Northern Illinois on homecoming day is leading Western Michigan by a score of 21 to 3. Jim Blaney with you at halftime. We are joined by the Northern Illinois women's head basketball coach, Carol Owens. And Carol, you spent the summer again coaching one of the USA national teams, the U19 team. You went to Thailand, you won gold. Tell us a little bit about the experience. Great experience. We're in Bangkok, Thailand against some really good competition and uh, just played well as the competition went on but uh, really happy we came back with the goal. How does that fit in with your coaching ability? Because at U19, you're coaching college-age girls, so is it a little easier for you adjusting to a team that's about the age of the girls you normally coach anyway? Well, they're still young. It's like coaching uh, a group of freshmen. Right. And they're still learning. Some of them have had a year in, uh, of college and some have not. So you're still trying to teach them some of the fundamentals that they will gather as the years go on. But uh, we came together, and it was fun. They're a good group, great talent, and some future Olympians. As a coach, what do you gain in an experience like that that helps you when you come back on campus here in DeKalb? Well, the experience is that you keep coaching. As a player, if you work on your game on the off season, you're going to be a better player during the season. And same thing with the coach. I get to continue to you know, uh, work on my craft, professional development, 
but actually coach the game and learn some X's and O's as I go along the way. I had a great staff, Bill Finley from Iowa State and Amanda Butler from Florida. So it was a great experience. Uh, you keep working, you keep learning the game, which is I'm a student of the game. So it was a lot of fun. You're about ready to roll out the basketballs here in DeKalb. Talk a little bit about your schedule because you have a number of Illinois colleges and universities on your schedule this year. I would imagine that does a lot to help continue to raise the profile of your program. Absolutely. I mean, we don't have to go far to play really good competition. I think that's what it's all about. And when you can get uh, other schools in the state to come, people can come and you're going to draw some people along with recruiting. They're familiar with the teams that you play. So we, we get all those teams together to help us for conference. And, and I think we got a really good schedule, really competitive schedule. You not only coach this team, but you're also an alum. It's the 20 year anniversary of the 89 team that went to the NCAA tournament for the first time. What does that mean as you look back? Because that really was the foundation of the program that resulted in the, what continued with EC Hill and players along the line. Well, I feel honored. I was one of those members of that 89 team, and I can't believe it's 20 years now. So uh, just really honored to be a part of that foundation, and, and hopefully we can bring that back. You know, that's something that we want to do at, at NIU, and I'm a proud alum and, and have a lot of passion for what we've done here. As the rain starts to pick up, that's our cue to say thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Carol, good luck in the coming season. Thank you very much. All right, Carol Owens, the head women's basketball coach here at NIU. We're at halftime. We're at Northern Leeds, Western Michigan, 21-3. Dave and Bob are back with the highlights and the stats from the opening half as we continue here from DeKalb. I'm a forensic scientist for the Illinois State Police. I'm a demographics and mapping analyst. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. All the NIU faculty had real-world experience that they translated into their classrooms. The faculty at NIU are fantastic. They hooked me up with a great internship out at Fermi Lab. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. I'm Kellen Hunter. I'm Amanda Crompart. I'm Marcus Lashock. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons Bookstore, you're entering Husky Country. VCB is the official site for NIU Athletics, featuring the NIU Husky logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or fan of NIU Athletics, the Village Commons Bookstore is your official Husky headquarters. Visit us at the stadium on game day or at our store in DeKalb at 901 Lucinda or on the web at www.vcbs.com. So far, it has saved us over $70,000. When we go to purchase something, we always think of direct buy first. If you live on the East Coast, West Coast, or anywhere in between, there is now a way for you to buy virtually everything you need for your home without paying traditional retail store markups. You'll save up to 50% and more off the items you need for your home and family. Join the hundreds of thousands from across North America who are already saving more than ever at Direct Buy. When we found out that we could save this money, Direct Buy was the only way to go. Not expecting to be rich. I'm going to be middle class the rest of my life. And to be to me, this was a, a very easy way to live above my means. Act now. Call the number on your screen to receive your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy showroom. Plus, you'll receive a free copy of the Insider's Guide to Buying Direct. You do have an alternative to retail store markup. Call to get your free visitor's pass and learn how to be a member of Direct Buy. Call now. Someday, the driver will get to choose how efficient or powerful their car will be. The most fuel efficient of all luxury vehicles is here. The first ever HS Hybrid. Lease the 2010 HS 250H for $439 a month for 36 months with $36.39 due at signing. 21-3 at the half, the Northern Illinois Huskies lead the Western Michigan Broncos. Time to take a look at our highlights and our stats and get some of your prognostications for the second half. Let's take a look first at our highlight package. And Northern Illinois got rolling early, Chandler Harnish going up top. Well, the reason you're able to do this thing is because of play action. Play action comes after having the ability to run the football. When you get good play action, you get good play action, the linebackers come up, the free safety came up, the strong safety came up, and it was pitch and catch on a basically a fundamental post route. Little trickery for Western Michigan, but Northern Illinois, Pat Killer not buying it. Fake field goal comes up short, did not lead NIU points though. 
Well, one of the things you see is Schiller's pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. Great, great concentration here. Great throw by Chandler Harnett. As I mentioned before, it's the whole package. Now here we see the running game comes back. We've got two great runners and an outstanding quarterback, but it all comes down to the offensive line. That right side of the offensive line for Northern Illinois, and Jason Indiago pulling over from the left side and coming around on linebackers has done an outstanding job. Chad Spann, Nico Brown, I mean the whole, I mean that whole offense that still goes back to the offensive line. All right, now look at our stats brought to you by Kishwaukee Community Hospital. Passing yards are fairly even, but rushing yards, an absolute blowout in favor of Northern Illinois. Well, 153 to 42, but what those rushing yards are indicative of is this, keeping Tim Hiller off the field. We mentioned early on that for Northern Illinois to be successful, they had to sustain the football with long drives, 12, 13 yards. As long as Tim Hiller is a spectator, Northern Illinois will have this football game for theirs to win. All right, now let's take a look at the individual rushing leaders. We talked about in the open, Bob, that Chandler Harnish can't be your leading rusher. And today, it's Miko Brown and Chad Spann. So it's back to where Jerry Kill would like to have. Oh, I don't think there's any question. 78 yards, 59 yards, and Chandler Harnish only with 16 yards. What does that mean? That means that he's putting the football in the hands of the playmakers and that his running backs are taking charge of the game rather than he running the football. All right. We've got another half of football to play. We'll find out if Western Michigan has a comeback in that trail. 21-3 here in DeKalb. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest-free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow-up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1-800-CHECKUP today. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1 800 Checkup today. Men, we really got to get in them today. We're going to run 367 wide drag, ice cream soft. He's going to get here and we're going to scoop him. Q, you look him off. The V over the top. Swallow the frog now. Swallow it. Hit the post and score. Now, has everybody got it? All right, let's go. Let's get after it. Oh, that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown right there. NIU Husky football. No matter how you say it, there's only one way to experience it. Live. Air One Wireless. Let's get it on. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. The Bank of America Chicago Marathon is coming, and there's only one show that will give you mile by mile coverage of the biggest race in the Midwest. Runners Ultimate Network's Marathon Mayhem on Comcast Sportsnet. Interviews with the lead runners and runners who just crossed the finish line. Plus, all the advice you need to know about recovering and getting ready for your next big race. Runners Ultimate Network's Marathon Mayhem. Monday night, October 12th at 7, presented by Accelerated Rehabilitation Centers. For more information about Marathon Mayhem, visit runnersultimatenet.com. Three, two, one. For five years, Comcast Sportsnet Chicago has redefined the way people in Chicago watch their favorite team. Now, a side of Comcast Sportsnet you have never seen. We're behind the scenes at CTL. Comcast Sportsnet, behind the lens, will take you on an unprecedented journey to the inner workings of CSN. This is a Rolex for to take to it. I mean, this is live TV. All from behind the lens. NIU football on Comcast Sports that is brought to you by Kishwaukee Community Hospital, National Bank and Trust Company, Fatty's Pub and Grill, and the Village Commons Bookstore. The broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Northern Illinois University. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Comcast Sportsnet and NIU is strictly prohibited. All right, the Huskies are back on the field. We are awaiting the return of the Broncos. I'm sure 
Coach Cubitt has a few words with his club. And let's check in with Jim Blaney. David, thank you very much. One thing that the people at home watching might want to keep an eye on in the second half is what Northern does defensively on first down. They had a defensive meeting late in the first half. They were very, very pleased with what was going on, but the message to the defensive players was, let's make sure we win first down, because that means on second and third, we can really go after Tim Hiller. And at that time, they felt they were getting close, and that if they could get it to the second gear, they would start to get to him. You saw a little bit of that in the last drive Western Michigan had to end the first half. And just for your information, it is starting to rain again. Back to you. Well, that means Jim's going to get wet. Yeah, I like Jim. We had Jim. He, what did we call him? A dinosaur or anything when he was talking a about Neanderthal. A Neanderthal, okay? But I'm going to tell you something, Jim. If I ever coach again and become a head coach, you are going to be my offensive coordinator. We may have one pass play in. I'm going to you know run what? the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Bob, it amazes me. I, I watch high school football games every Friday night, and it amazes me how many times I see a coach. He'll have third and four and the lead. He just has to keep the clock moving, and they run a pass play. The clock stops. It saves the other team a timeout. It just so many good things happen when you run the ball, and mainly, especially if you have the lead, the clock continues to run. I have no problem with seeing passing to get a lead, but if you want to hold on to a lead, you have to be able to run the football. Oh, okay. What a segue you, you into and our Woody keys. Hayes over here to my right. I, I'll have Air Correa. What, what, what a segue to our keys. Nice job, Jim. And the keys are for Northern Illinois to be able to sustain drives, ball control, keep Hiller off the field. The keys for the Broncos were run to throw. They need to run the football a bit more successfully and set up the play action if they're going to take this football into the end zone on the arm of Tim Hill. All right, our keys brought to you by the fine folks at University Plaza. And one of the guys who we brought up here today to spot and call penalties, my friend Al Fine, he is a Northern Illinois grad. He lived at University Plaza. Is that right? Yes. He actually lived there. He did. A shameless plug. He did. He was kicked out, but he lived there for a while. I don't think he was kicked out. Hey, here's Coach Cubitt. You know, I'm, we, I mentioned earlier, Coach Cubitt has an outstanding staff, but he has a young guy on his staff that coached at Northern Illinois University for 24 years, Mike Sabach. I actually shared an office with him here at Husky Stadium. Jerry Kill came in. Mike stayed through three head football coaches and, and was not retained by Jerry and now is uh, on Bill Kubit's staff at Western Michigan in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Mike Sabach, one of the true gentlemen in coaching that I've ever met, a class act. And ironically, his son Ryan, number 63, is a backup long snapper for the Huskies of Northern Illinois University. I saw Sandy Sabach, Mike's wife before the game, the great memories that she has of this area. I said to her, who are you rooting for uh, today? And she said, well, I really don't want to talk about that too much. Great family, right, great football family. Got son on family. one side, husband on the other. Yeah. You know, and you look at this Western Michigan program, and you talked about Coach Cubitt, but it's a really fine school. They've had a lot of good athletes in all sports come out of there. Take a look at their football profile. Ten perfect seasons in school history, four bowl appearances, last in 08, the Texas Bowl. They've won over 500 games in the program's history. Fourteen have been all Americans. It's a real solid institution of higher learning. In a great town. It is. Great Wonderful location. Town. I mentioned Back. Mike Sabach. He's coming here to Chicago this year already and has four commitments from high school football players in the Chicago area to come to play for Well, the, the funny thing year. is John McDougal, who is a Hall of Fame basketball coach here that I worked for, John McDougal, after he left Northern, was an assistant at Western Michigan. Hey, let's talk real quick, David, about mid-American quarterbacks. Last year I was preparing for a game. I started when I was doing my homework the way, just the way you taught me, David. Do the boards and prepare and all that, and it came to me. That that game was being played on a Saturday. The next day being Sunday, obviously, there were eight rostered mid-American quarterbacks in the National Football League, six of whom were going to start the next day. Let's see if we can name the six starters. Chad Pennington, Marshall. Byron Leftwich, Marshall. Uh, Ben Chris Radkowski of Toledo for the Bucks. Ben, ben Roethlisberger is four. Who else am I missing? That was eight. Charlie Fry yep. was going to start at the time from Akron. That's five. We're missing one quarterback. And if you call in with the answer, you'll get the Smuckers and a round of golf. 
<laughs> hey, how about this Salerno? I mean, talk about accuracy. Charlie Batch. Charlie Batch. Eastern Michigan. How about the accuracy of Salerno? He puts that football right just to the outside of that S in Huskies every we saw that a week single ago. time. That's a luxury. You don't see that across the greater scheme of, of collegiate football. This young man is an outstanding talent, and that's a real luxury for a football team. 13 of 15 on field goals since last season. So, real solid effort out of Mike Salerno, the Husky kicker. All right, Hiller and company go to work. 15 minutes of football to go here in the third quarter, and they're down 18. And he's gonna throw on first down with a seven step drop, and he's going down the field, and he's intercepted by Patrick George. First play of the second half is picked off. George will be dragged down at the 15 yard line. So they take a shot at a home run ball, and it comes up zero. Why? Because George played the pass the entire time. There was not a run threat. He did not come up, play the run initially. There was no element of surprise. He, they are all right now in their drops. Great coverage. Good job of getting in front of the, uh, the intended receiver, putting himself between the intended receiver and the quarterback. Comes down with the football. Big, big time opening play for the Huskies. How would you compare Hiller to the young man we saw from Idaho last week, Enderly? We have to talk about that. <laughs> I think they're both outstanding talents. They are. Both 6'5 and 230 pounds. Harness dragged down. It'll be a tackle for loss. I believe the man that came up was Cody Selinski from his D tackle spot. And it's a homecoming for him. The senior is out of Downers Grove, Illinois. And right there, that young coach with the uh, Northern Illinois cap on who just congratulated Patrick George, Jay Sabell. Jay Sabell reminds me an awful lot of his boss, uh, Jerry Kill, fundamentally sound. Sound football coach, was an outstanding high school football player and was a graduate assistant for me at Notre Dame. There you go. All in the family. Chad Spann makes a man miss. Spann dragged down at the five-yard line. Boy, this young guy's showing a burst today. Watch number 47 here, David. Watch number 47. Connor Flayhive. Connor Flayhive, shoulders square. Bam -o. Look at the legs, hands inside. Oh my goodness, I love it. I love it. Harness, handoff span, trying to pick his way. Squirts through, dives, he's in. Same play, Get David. Six. They came right back with the same, the same play. And Connor yet again, but outstanding block, brought his legs. There was that little lateral crease, single. He takes it, accelerates through and into the end zone. Well executed. Real solid run by Chad Spann. His third touchdown of the day. His ninth rushing touchdown of the season. He stretches out, finds the end zone. Eddie Adamski said, I'll make a call for you. Connor Flay, Connor Flay now. He, he's, he's buying for my attention over Kyle Scarb. And he's doing a good job of it. I think I'll take them both. There you have it. Here and it is again, Dave. And the end zone. The Huskies winning big on homecoming Saturday by 25. I'm a forensic scientist with Illinois State Police. I'm a demographics and mapping analyst. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. All the NIU faculty had real-world experience that they translated into their classrooms. The faculty at NIU are fantastic. They hooked me up with a great internship out at Fermi Lab. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. I'm Kellen Hunter. I'm Amanda Crompart. I'm Marcus Lashock. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. I thought it was crazy feeding in the fall. I always feed in the fall, but it's the best time. Feed your lawn in the fall. The fall feeding makes all the difference in the world. What the fall feeding does is build the roots. That's when the roots sort of want nutrition. I give my lawn Scott's Winter Garden. It's like a root building machine. It builds your lawn from the roots up. Next year, you get this. The stronger the roots, the stronger the lawn all year long. The best time to feed is when it'll do the most good. There's no substitute for the fall feeding, trust me. It is the best thing you could do for your lawn. I use Scott's Winter Garden. 
28 to 3, the Huskies in command over the Broncos of Western Michigan. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney with you. The scoring drive off of the interception by Patrick George. Just three plays, 12 yards in the time took. A buck 19 span his ninth touchdown, and I believe we've got to check on how Navy is doing. That would tie him for the national lead in rushing touchdowns. By the way, as we get ready for the kickoff from Salerno, last year's Super Bowl champion Pittsburgh Steelers, the three quarterbacks that they took to the Super Bowl, Ben Roethlisberger, Miami of Ohio, and that one, he angled for the corner, he kicked it out of bounds, so the flag will I fly I should not have said a word about young Mr. Salerno. Last year's Super Bowl champion Steelers, quarterback by Ben Roethlisberger from Miami, the backup quarterbacks were Charlie Batch, Eastern Michigan, Byron Leftwich, Marshall, when they were a Mac school. James Harrison of Kent State, their defensive player of the year. Great conference, David. How about that? Great conference. Marshall, not as long time a member of this conference as some other schools. I think the interesting additions are Buffalo and Temple. I think those are great additions. Most recent. The Northern, the, the front seven for the Huskies today have been, in a word, stout. They've come up big time and again. And again, I have to reference the fact that they've been off the field quite a bit and they are fresh. Good job of pursuit. What is pursuit? When 11 of those Husky helmets around the football on every single play. Hallmark of great defense. Again, great pursuit. 54, Jake Kaufman, a Marine. Two tours of duty in the Middle East and Iraq. And now playing here for the Huskies. West up the gut. Yeah. Now, one Drag of the down, things. Alex Kuba, I believe, was the man that had him wrapped up 37. Oh, David, mentioning that front seven for Northern Illinois, they are not playing against a bunch of rookies. Look at the starts. Swanson, 29. Clemens, 28. Mitchell, 20. 17, 16. They are playing against a big, athletic, experienced offensive line, and they are coming up big. Lots of credit. Lots of credit. Defensive coordinator Tracy Clays of the Huskies. Hiller with an empty backfield. Pressure, has some time, and underthrows his man. He was trying to hit Caleb Ravenel. Kyrie Daniels was there in coverage, and it will bring up a fourth down. And Western Michigan's offense stalls out once again, and they will punt the football away. Tommy Davis, redshirt freshman out of East St. Louis, Illinois, who's back to return the punt, also handles kickoff chores, and he will field this one at his own three. And he goes right up the gut, makes a man miss, and he's gone! There's a flag, though, and it's down. I think it's coming back. But Tommy Davis going to take this one 95 yards. But to hold the phone, we have Yellow Laundry sitting at the nine-yard line. This is going to be an interesting return, call. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Wipe out the 95-yard kick return. Wiped out by a penalty. Jerry Kill not happy. We'll take the timeout with the officials with the Huskies in control 28 And IU fans, when you enter the Village Commons Bookstore, you're entering Husky Country. VCB is the official site for NIU Athletics, featuring the NIU Husky logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or fan of NIU Athletics, the Village Commons Bookstore is your official Husky headquarters. Visit us at the stadium on game day or at our store in DeKalb at 901 Lucinda or on the web at www.vcbs.com. The new CSNChicago.com. 
Log on and explore Comcast Sportsnet's new highly interactive website. It's the ultimate destination on the web for everything happening with Chicago's teams. On-demand multimedia, blogs and fan forums, live scores and breaking news, in-depth analysis from our expert crew, and the day's complete programming lineup. It's all on CSNChicago.com, the ultimate destination for a Chicago sports fan on the web. This year, the thrill returns to the hardwood as the Chicago Bulls ignite on the west side. Catch all the excitement and high def on one network. Comcast Sportsnet, bringing you the best pre- and post-game coverage with former NBA star Kendall Gill and CSN analyst Mark Chanowski. Hello again, everyone. Welcome into Toyota Bulls post-game live. Plus, breaking news, locker room interviews, and live press conferences. There's no reason to miss any of your favorite team's coverage this season when you have Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. All right, 28 to 3. So the long return negated by a penalty. Illegal block in the back. Coach, what'd you see? Well, I think uh, there's no doubt it was an illegal block in the back, but I disagree with Tommy Davis's decision to field the football at basically the three yard line. Get your heels on the 10 yard line. If the ball goes over your head, so be it. You're ahead 28 to 3. Momentum is on your side. The other thing, fielding that football with a guy coming down in your face and securing the football, it, perhaps if there wasn't a block in the back, you could have really got tagged down there around the three-yard line and put yourself in your team in harm's way. Bad decision. Jay Stavelt, the special teams coach from uh, the Huskies, is to have to sit Tommy Davis down and talk to him a little bit about that. Miko Brown tripped up by Keith Dixon, a great tackle to reach out with one arm and trip him up. Big time play by Keith Dixon. There's Jay Savell. Uh, and again, all I'm saying is this. Yes, was there a block in the back? Had there not been a block in the back, he could have very well been lit up right there on the three And maybe line. fumbled. And maybe fumbled. Bad decision all around. I'd be talking to Tommy Davis about that. It's a second and two after a gain of eight. Scar man in motion. Hand off Miko Brown, bounces it outside, turns the corner. Miko Brown out of bounds. A flag flies very late. We'll see what this penalty is. Jerry I Kill is right in there trying to make the call. If the hole, if there is a hold, it's going to be on landed Cox. On the offense, number 80. After this is got it. Repeat, second down. I don't I, I really question this call. David, we have not seen last week we had five calls that were reviewed. We have not had a call yet today to be reviewed. There's no doubt about uh, the hole. No doubt. Pull, pull and tug. Let him go. Let him go. I mean, yeah, right here, you don't want to put your team in jeopardy here. I mean, you, you've got momentum on your side. The ball, if you let the ball run into the end zone, you've got the ball in the 20-yard line. I mean, on and on. Don't, you know, in tennis, what do they call them, unforced errors? Right. No unforced errors. Play your game. Or, as some coaches like to call them the late Randy Walker, call them self-inflicted wounds. What a, what a great man, Randy Walker. Oh, phenomenal. There's the throw, and it's dropped. Right in the hands. And it's dropped by Nathan Palmer. You know, David, you mentioned uh, the late Randy Walker, an outstanding football coach, an outstanding person off the field, a product of the Mid-American Conference, actually played his football at Miami of Ohio and you know, went on to Northwestern and started doing some great things there. And unfortunately, uh, we, we lost Randy. And, uh, but he'll always be rem remembered by anybody that he touched, whether it be a coach or someone who played for him. And, what a great legacy he leaves. Yeah, Randy was a heck of a guy. He really was. He's a good friend and uh, sorely missed. Third and seven. Hand off to Miko Brown, and he will be gang tackled. A whistle blows. And this one will be spotted probably around the nine yard line, so it will bring up. A punting situation for the Huskies. Which should result in excellent field position for the Broncos. Now, if you're the Broncos, do you, do you come, try to block this kick? I don't. I call no, safe I, punt. I, I completely and I want to And I want to run because we are. they are going to have good field position. First of all, field the foot. White deep. White backing up, catches it at the 34. 
White makes a man miss, now drags it up to the, let's see where they'll call it, 42, 43 yard line. So solid field position for Western Michigan and their big time quarterback, Tim Hiller. Spencer Williamson came over and made that hit. And it's time right now, teams. it's time right now, David, for the Broncos to come up, come up big. They forced the punt, come up, come, move the football down the field, do the things that you know how to do, be, you know, don't get too conservative, but don't, at the same time, don't take too many risks. Just fall in that little zone in between of doing the things that Tim Hiller knows how to do and do so well. Aaron Winchester now in at tailback, a smaller man, very quick. And he takes his first handoff, he goes right up the middle, and he is dragged down quickly. That hole closed, Spencer Williamson. Had him around the legs and dragged him down. Usually you come with a you know the little dump pass to you know to the tailback, elongated handoff. Then you take the shot. First you gotta be able to run the football a little bit and freeze those linebackers and those safeties. And the football came out. Northern Illinois saying they have it. DJ Perkle. Ex just blew this play up, as they say. Yes, he did. What a great effort. Talk about quickness off the football. That first step, that very first step, puts you in position to make a great play. If you've got a quick first step, and there it is, leverage, pad under pad, now he just explodes, gets a hand down, shows great strength. Now, you see, Dave, when I say pad under pad, his pads are under the pads of, of, of the offensive lineman there, number 63. And then it all turns into an effort play. Great job, DJ Perkle. Third and 12. Hiller looking, throws, missed his man. Boy, that one went right over the top of Corey Hansen. Looked like perhaps it was a, uh, two broken routes to the top. Those two receivers should have not have been in that close of a proximity to each other. Unless it was going to be the old hook and ladder, as they say. See, one of the things Northern Illinois, the Huskies are doing now with their front, they're twisting and turning and not just bull rushing, forcing these big offensive linemen to get into a situation where they have to make switches up front. Ben Armour to punt, and he is hit. Let's see if the, the flag does not fly. They the said ball was, was deflected. Tipped. The ball was deflected. I saw him in the pile waiting for the yellow laundry, but it was indeed tipped. So we're headed to break. The Huskies have the football. When we come back, it's all NIU today. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest-free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow-up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1-800-CHECKUP today. Save $500 per eye now when you choose LASIK from the Hauser Ross Eye Institute. With interest-free financing, you pay just $150 per month for both eyes. Plus, follow-up visits are covered for two years. Call Hauser Ross at 1-800-CHECKUP today. Larry English, you were just selected in the first round by San Diego in the Pro Football Draft. Where are you going to go? I'm going to Fatty's. Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official NIU pre- and post-game headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our high-definition big screens or enjoying some of our famous grilled food in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. It's all at Fatty's Pub and Grill, located just south of Husky Stadium on West Lincoln Highway in DeKalb. Back at Husky Stadium where Northern Illinois leads Western Michigan 28 to three. Special teams and special plays have been a key part of the Huskies' success so far this year. None bigger than the fake punt against Purdue which led to a victory over the Boilermakers. But then last week in the game against Idaho, Northern put on a furious rally that came up just short. But one of the big plays in that sequence of special teams, a block punt that gave the Huskies life late. And then today the biggest special teams play was not fighting on a fake field goal by Western Michigan in the first half. That's one of the reasons why the Huskies are leading and leading big right now. David, back to you. All right, Jim Blaine, thank you very much. Chad Spann continuing his big day all the way out to the 36 
six-yard line. Watch the left side of Northern Illinois' offensive line create a lateral crease in the defense of Western Michigan. What an outstanding job. And, and David, again, and, and not to belabor the point, but this young guy, number 47, Connor Flav, Flayhive, yep. outstanding job there in that chop block. Look at our young man having himself quite a day. Chad Spann again up the middle. Spann getting a ton of work, picks up three yards on that carry. You know, I talked about earlier about Northern Illinois' defense being off the field, having to be off the field because of the ability, the arm, and the offensive line of Tim Hiller. We're seeing this from the other side of, of the uh, other sideline right now. Western Michigan's defense has been on the field an inordinate amount of time, and they are really starting to get wore down. Those defensive linemen that are pass rushers and pursuit, big guys that have to run that way become very fatiguing. Wide receiver screen to Landon Cox. Makes one man miss by just chucking Dixon off him. Get off of me. My least favorite play in football. Wide receiver You just screen. watched it right there. I, 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 I see that ball go out and I see some corner coming up about 100 miles an hour single going up in the opposite direction into the end zone. Right, a pick six. A pick six. My favorite play? Hand off to the full length. Yeah, figures. Off guard. <laughs> Get a little creative later in the game. Off pack. I'll take the Boise State hook and ladder they ran in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl a few years ago. Chad Spann is going to be, we'll see where they spot this. I'm going to say he's going to be just short. Did they give him the first? Did they first down? Yes, they did. So I was wrong. First looked like he come up just a bit short. After five years of working together, that was the first time that you were wrong about anything. Funny guy, said Bob Kamel. I want to get it on that free golf, David. Harnish ducks under center. Play action fakes. He's going down the field, and he's got score. The big fullback down the field makes the catch. That's a Husky first down and a big-time game. Your guy. Play action pass. Froze the corner. Froze the free safety. Scarb, he becomes a wide receiver. This is a fundamental wheel route. Comes out of the out of the backfield and up the sideline. Good pitch, good catch. Scarb said, you know what? Got my boy Flayhive in there blocking. Throw me the football. Flayhive the lead blocker. Span again making people miss as he follows Flayhive into action. And a big game for the Huskies. And again, toward the, toward the left side of the defensive line of Western Michigan, the right side of the Husky offensive line. Just, I, I can't say enough about this offensive line. They're so fundamentally sound. And you know, when you get a back that blocks that way, and, and David, again, Landon Cox, outstanding block that got the extra five, six, seven yards. Span. Picking his way, knocked down at the five. What an outstanding drive. One of the things that defense has put up as a goal in the defensive meeting room is no drive over 12 plays. You want to keep all drives under 12 plays if possible. You know, David, I think there was a face mask on this play also. Let's take a look. Yeah, absolutely, there was a face mask. If it's not a face mask, a horse collar, one or the other. Absolutely a face mask on Braska, number 48. Huskies have it second and five at the six. Harness, pressure, looking, rolls, throws, and hit a man in the back. Three. Three of Northern Illinois receivers all again in the same proximity, which when you bring three receivers to the same area, you also bring three coverage people. Gonna bring up a third down. 
at the five. That was a fundamental bootleg. Starts out one way, comes back the other way with the football. And that was a naked bootleg. In other words, they didn't pull a guard or they didn't pull a tackle or even a center to come out there and give him a run pass option. There's Andy Dorsley, the man who broke up that play. We'll take a look at the touchdown leaders in just a moment because it's been a big day for Chad's fan. Cross to the back of the end zone, incomplete, looking for Landon Cox. Does this play selection right here, David, the last two plays surprise you just a bit? It did. I, I, I'm going to run the football and keep that clock ticking. Mario Armstrong, strong safety, was there in coverage, and now we'll have a field goal try from Salerno at the 4.03 mark of the third quarter. Huskies are trying to go up 31-3. Salerno's field goal is good. You're in good hands with Mike Salerno. There's an old saying, David, you don't even have to look. You can hear it. When this kid strikes a football, it resonates through the whole stadium. He has a strong leg. And he pounds it through, and the Huskies are in command by 28. There's a look at Chad Spann, who's had a big day today. Where does he rank nationally in TDs? He's number one in the country now at 10. Got nine rushing touchdowns, 10 overall touchdowns, and he is number one in all of college football at finding the end zone. It's quite an honor. Let's go down the sidelines, Jim Blaney. Jimmy. All right, David, thank you very much. You're talking about the great day Chad Spann is having. This guy right here, LaShawn Johnson, had a lot of great days in this stadium. Back in 1993, set the single-season rushing record for Husky running backs at 1,976. You're a Heisman candidate. Does it really seem like 16 years ago now? No, it doesn't. You know, I feel like I still can play, but, uh, you know, it's been a long time ago, and um, time flies by. And, you know, I tell every kid, you know, enjoy this moment and, you know, do what you can and do it at your best. Do you take any pride in watching Michael Turner, Garrett Wolf, Chad Spann, Miko Brown, this progression of running backs that there has been here, what you said to me a moment ago, is we're now running back you. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, this NIU is pretty much known for running backs. And, uh, you know, I feel like that, you know, this school produced a lot of good running backs, and, and hopefully that uh, there's more to come. And, you know, I like the way Miko running the ball, and he's doing a great job. Husky Stadium looks a little different than it, than it did 16 years ago, didn't it? Yes, it looked a lot different. Uh, they did a wonderful job here. Uh, you know, the facility is awesome, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better facility. Well, Sean, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you. All right, David, back to you. I remember watching that young man run the football. First of all, really nice, nice guy. But he had a game against Iowa that I had a chance to watch as Hiller goes down the field incomplete. Looking for White down the field. Bryant was there in coverage. But LaShawn Johnson against Iowa, 11 6 93. He rumbled for 306 yards. That is fifth all time. And against Southern Illinois, he ran for 322. That's third all time. Those are big time numbers. Do you think you've ever run 322 yards in your life? On a treadmill. <laughs> Brandon West knocked down at the 26-yard line. Going to bring up a third and four for the Western Michigan Broncos, who are struggling with their offense today. Down 31 to three. Credit that Northern Illinois defense. I mean, great scheme, some great blitz packages, some twists and turns up front, keeping that great, a really good offensive line from Western Michigan off balance. Hiller throws and has it batted right back in his face. And David, watch the body language right now, Tim Hiller. Tracy Wilson got a paw up and smacked this one down. And blew up the play before it ever got going. Watch 25 leave his feet and show you hops. 
What a vertical jump. Wow. <laughs> I bet you he can put it down. Whoa. That's getting up. We were watching Tim Hiller come off the field, as I mentioned before. A great competitor. But, you know, you watch. It's the uh, third quarter basically coming to a close. He hasn't had a great deal of success today. You see that body language and interprets it to one word, frustration. Armour's punt to Tommy Davis. He will catch it at the 30. He'll make one move. He's up the sideline. He's across the 40, across the 50. He stays on his feet now. Is knocked down. They'll say he stepped out at the Western Michigan 40-yard line, and that is where the Husky offense will go on the attack after another great return from Tommy Davis. Great job by the special team setting up that wall down the sideline. You work on this. Great, great balance. My goodness. I mean, they have some very, very athletic, skill position players on this football team. That is the longest return of his career. I guess that's why they're skill position players. That's but you it. know what? Athleticism has to be the hallmark across the entire team, whether it's the offensive line, the secondary running backs. Get great athletes. Make them into great football players. Harness, there's the wide receiver screen. And it will be a gain of about seven yards. A little bit of a you know, Harness sees that cushion at, with the corner there, knows he can deliver the football. And then now that wide receiver becomes a running back. Palmer made the catch. He's already got a touchdown today, the first touchdown of the game for the Huskies. Dorsally over to Shepard into the sideline. Shepard. I oh, like the Shepard. I keep it fresh and interesting, don't I? Harness hands to Miko Brown, and he will go nowhere. Bring up a third down and about two. You know, Miko Brown comes all the way from Moss Point, Mississippi, Moss Point High School. He comes up here. And I'm sure that part of the reason he came here is just what Jim Blaney talked about. You know, running back you. Running back you. And you take those former running backs that are on campus and you recruit and you and, and let them know. And you know one of the things you talk to the running back about? Who your offensive linemen are. Seriously, Dave. Who your offensive linemen are and how productive they are. And the fact that if you run behind them, you'll have great success. Miko Brown dragged down for a tackle for loss. Big time hit by Andy Dorsley, who's a senior out of Miami, Florida, and has played very well here the last quarter, quarter and a half. David, the demographic, the recruiting demographic at the Mid-American Conference has changed. I mean, there are players from all over the country. Now, basically, you, you start with your, you know, you, your most fertile recruiting area, which for Northern Illinois, obviously, is the greater Chicago area, which is a real luxury. And then you spread out from there. They're going to try the downwind field goal. This is going to be a long one, a 53-yard. Salerno has the leg, and he hit the upright. He hit the upright. Do you know what? In game situation, up by 28, late third, Jerry Kill wants to know what his guy can do for him. Well, I think he just showed him. Hitting the upright, the question is, do you have enough leg? He had plenty of leg. You know, and usually a right-footed kicker, you get a, a little bit of a draw. He didn't get, there was no draw on the ball. I mean, the ball hit the upright, so what, he miss, misses the deal by, what, four inches or five inches or something like That's that. It. And, you know, for a kicker, you say, you know, my coach had enough confidence in me to let me try that kick from that point. Aaron Winchester's back at tailback. Hiller's going down the field. He's got a man. And it is caught. White made the catch down at the 25-yard line. Watch the adjustment here. This is like, David, it's like watching an outstanding center fielder chasing a ball deep, uh, you know, in the pocket. Look here now. Over his left shoulder, over his right shoulder, great adjustment. There's a drill. Every wide receiver coach in the country does it. Has a guy run off looking to his right and then throws the ball over his left shoulder and makes him make, has him make the adjustment. Hiller throws, completes the pass. 
inside the NIU red zone. Nice touch on the ball. He'll bark out the plays at the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers. Hiller looking, looking, and has that one batted down. That right there was a, a, a trajectory problem. He has to get a little bit more air under the football and get it up a little bit higher Jake, when you're that close to the line of scrimmage. Jake Kaufman was the man who got a hand on it. 18 seconds. Six feet, five inches tall, 255 pounds. Very athletic. He's the young guy that was in the United States Marine. Playing against Nathan Enderly a week ago has to prepare you to play Tim Hiller. Good point, David. Flare out to Thompson, and he's going to be dragged down at the 23. We have a penalty marker on the play. Good job by Patrick George. The outstanding corner, number 33, came up and put a good hit on him. Jerry Kill, never satisfied. I think the penalty's... Legal formation on the offense. That penalty is declined to be fourth down. One of the things, uh, the score obviously 31 to three. Look, look, here's a football. This is a consummate football coach. A consummate football coach. Western Michigan will go. They are missing one of their starting receivers today. Juan Nunez not on this trip, out with an injury. Time out. They will charge that time out to the NIU Huskies. Excuse me, David. To the Huskies. There you go. Well, you know what the, the deal right there is? Personnel. Personnel, you know, you're constantly in this chess game. One of your assistant coaches up in the booth is assigned to watch the personnel changes that are occurring offensively, and then get them down to the defensive coaches and have them match up with certain packages. Conversely, you know, the offense to defense, defense to offense. And when you're really in a drastic situation where perhaps you're anticipating pass, 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 and you have a run-heavy defensive package in there, I think it's prudent to call prudent to call a timeout and, and readjust and get the right people. Exciting crowd, David. Homecoming here. Yep. Nice crowd here. 13 for 20 in the red zone this season for Western Michigan. 12 with a 13. Touchdown. Hiller, pressured, looking, throws, got his man. Ravenel made the catch at the end of the third quarter, but that will be enough to move the sticks. So Western Michigan stays on the attack, trying to climb back in it. One quarter to play. We'll be right back at Comcast Sportsnet. I'm a forensic scientist with the Illinois State Police. I'm a demographics and mapping analyst. I'm a feature reporter here at WGN-TV. All the NIU faculty had real-world experience that they translated into their classrooms. The faculty at NIU are fantastic. They hooked me up with a great internship out at Fermi Lab. I graduated from NIU four years ago. I'm at one of the top television stations in America. I'm Kellen Hunter. I'm Amanda Crompart. I'm Marcus Lashock. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. And I've got a great job. See Wrigley Field like you never have before. Take a 90-minute behind-the-scenes tour of this legendary ballpark. Now, Chicago Trolley offers convenient transportation to and from Wrigley Field. Purchase tickets by calling 1-800-THE-CUBS or by visiting Cubs.com. Are you going to the game or looking for a place to watch it? The Captain Morgan Club on Addison and Sheffield is calling your name. Open year-round with 30 flat-screen TVs and an outdoor patio. Come to the Captain Morgan Club to watch the Cubs and every sporting event. Tickets or no tickets, we're calling all captains.
Introducing a sports car that's into whatever you're into. The all-new 2010 Mitsubishi Lancer Sportback. For a limited time, get the Lancer Sportback with 0% APR financing for 48 months. NIU Football at Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by University Plaza. The NIU Bookstore. Air One Wireless. American National Bank of DeKalb County. And NIUHuskies.com. All right, homecoming Saturday, a chilly day here in DeKalb. We're at Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. I'm David Kaplan. He is Bob Kamel, the coach. Jim Blaney is patrolling the sidelines. And our great Comcast Sportsnet crew here. 31-3, first and 10 at the NIU 12 for Tim Hiller and company. And has that was batted down and picked. That one's going to the house. That one's going to be a touchdown. Jake Kaufman all the way to the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, NIU. Did I just play. Did I just talk about athleticism at every position? At every position, you recruit athleticism. This guy is six feet, 265, 255. I mean, and running down the field, let alone pulling up with the football. Athleticism at every position makes for great football teams. Great job of recruiting a big guy this way. Look at this, David. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he is rumbling down the field. This is a young man that served two tours of duty in Iraq serving our country as a U.S. Marine. And now he goes down the field, his first career touchdown. What a tremendous moment for that young man. He is an outstanding student. He is a tremendous young man. And there he makes one of the best plays he's ever made in his career. Bats down the pass, plucks it out of thin air, and says, I'm taking this one to the house. Touchdown, Huskies. Congratulations to Jake Kaufman. First time since September 20, 2008, that NIU has returned an interception for a touchdown. Waiting on the official distance of that pitch. That, that was a now, what's been more impressive to you today? The running game, which has been tremendous, and the offensive execution, or the defense, which has held Hiller and company to three? David, I would not say one or the other. They have played off of each other. We talked about running the football and stopping the run, and that's just what they did. 79-yard interception return. And, and David, I not, you know, obviously, be careful about being, you know, I'm happy for that young guy. I am happy for him, served our country two tours of duty. Kick is loose, scoop back up, and it will be knocked down at the, right around the 20 yard line. We'll talk with Northern Illinois Athletic Director Jeff Comfer in a moment. There had to be moments though, that young man is serving in Iraq and dreaming of after I'm done, two tours in Iraq, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to go to Northern, I'm going to play football, and then here he is 79 yards down the field. We've got the athletic director with us now, Jeff Comfer. Jeff, what a great moment for Jake Kaufman. I mean, that, that is the feel-good moment of the year so far, maybe the century. I mean, for him, you know his story. I mean, you, you've talked about it enough, but he is just an amazing young man, and, you know, he had to sit out last week for him to come back this week and get a play like that, it's just spectacular. I'm so happy for him. Just phenomenal. And the football's loose again, and a flag flies. And Northern Illinois recovered the football. There's a penalty there, David. We'll see what the penalty is. Birdie is in the football game, the backup quarterback again. Arnheim, I think, was the guy protesting. We may have an illegal forward pass. We have an illegal forward pass on the offense. 
The ball hit the ground. It's incomplete pass. The ball stays with the offense. It's a five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Lost it down. Second down. So it will stay with Western Michigan. But, Jeff, getting back to it's homecoming here. It's chilly. You got a great turnout. The rain was coming down, and the Huskies in command by 35. That's a pretty good feel-good day. It, it really is. Uh, we played the script out as we'd like today, and we came, started with an edge and kept the edge the whole game, both offensive and defense. Jeff, Jeff, let me ask you a question. Have you met, I, I, I should say that, you've met Jay Kaufman. You've yes. been around him. Talk a little bit about him, the kind of young guy that he is, and, and what he brings to the locker room as well as to the field. As you might suspect, he's a yes sir, no sir kind of a guy uh, coming from the military, but he has a tremendous presence on the team, and they look to him. He, he's not a rah rah guy. He is a follow me guy. And when when you look to the team, and he was missed last week. And the fact that you could see him getting ready this week and the guys respond to the way he plays, much like they did with Larry English, and he has become a leader on our team by the way he plays and by the way he conducts himself. What a credit to college football in general, let alone to the Husky football program. Junior out of German Valley, Illinois. Again, if you're just joining us, served two tours of duty in the Middle East, including Iraq, as a U.S. Marine. And then, after getting out of the military, he said, I want to go get my education now. And as a football player here for the Northern Illinois House, what a tremendous story. You know, Jeff, one of the things I think has been just so great for David and I to experience, both being former coaches here, the, the development of this program, the development of this university, and then to see the attendance the way it's been for, for the home games. And the I'm, facilities, right. everything. Yeah, it's, it has really, we have taken the steps right now to put ourselves in a position that we are attracting the best of the best in this area. I mean, we talked about it yesterday. You know, this university has raised $153 million over the last several years in our capital campaign. 18 million of, of that is sitting right here in our stadium. And when you get that kind of outpouring of goodwill from your alums and from the friends of the university you're going to have great things happening we are so pleased with where we're going as a university what is your next big project well i know what we'd like to do we don't we don't have a date we don't have any kind of formal announcement on it but we need to build that indoor practice facility and that's something that's uh, really important for us to have if we're going to compete uh, in this conference, we've got to have an indoor practice facility. All right, we've got to get to break. It's 38-3. The Huskies in command over the Broncos. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations. The Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Someday, the driver will get to choose how efficient or powerful their car will be. The most fuel-efficient of all luxury vehicles is here. The first-ever HS Hybrid. Lease the 2010 HS 250H for $439 a month for 36 months with $36.39 due at signing. All right, welcome back here to Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. David Kaplan, Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney's down on the sidelines, and we have Jeff Comfer with us, who is the athletic director here congrats on what a Thanks. wonderful experience this has been for homecoming day everybody's been into it. it it's a great homecoming i've spent a lot of time walking around tailgates prior to coming in today and there's just a really good atmosphere out there and people are so happy to be back on campus and surprised at all the growth they've seen in and around our university uh, jeff one of the things that athletic directors do usually perhaps after the game around monday do you visit do you visit with with jerry kill uh, yeah, what I normally do with Jerry uh, after the games is um, I'll go uh, go into the locker room, hear, hear what he has to say. By the way, we have a fumble, and Northern Illinois has recovered yet again, and I think it may have been Jay Kaufman. I think you're right. 
Uh, it, I'd love to hear what Jerry has to say after after a win, especially. But even after a loss, it's great to hear his remarks. And then uh, Coach and I will talk briefly uh, after the game, and then he'll do his his press uh, post game press conference. And then uh, we normally talk a little bit later on uh, later tonight or on Sunday. Now you guys also signed him to an extension. We did, which shows not only a commitment to him. But recruits look and go, boy, there's stability in that program. Well, that's what we wanted. We wanted people, no matter what happened this season, no matter who we beat or who we lost to, that he's our guy. And uh, that's very important for us in the future of our program. Nico Brown dragged down right around the 40-yard line of Western Michigan as the clock drips toward 12.45. Yeah, that's it. Bob, as a recruiting coordinator, that's a huge thing when you can say, my boss is going to be there because yeah, they're committed to him. One of the one of the uh, things that is so critically important and often overlooked in, as a, in recruiting and as a recruiting coordinator is continuity, not only with the head coach, with the assistant coaches. Same coaches going back to the same high schools, establishing trust, establishing relationships with those high school coaches. That's what it takes, and, and that's what made uh, has made this staff so successful over the years, and we'll continue to make them successful. They're loyal to each other and loyal to this university. There's the wide receiver screen that Bob loves so much, and it is a gain of a couple yards. Toledo today beat Ball State 37 to 30. You guys will see them next in a couple weeks. Western Michigan will play them next week. So high-powered offensive attack. Yeah, it's it's one of those games whoever has the ball last, and we we've been in a few of those ourselves. And and uh, you know they they've proven they can move the ball against some very stiff competition this year. So that'll be a tough test for us. I'm glad we have an extra week to prepare for them because we're off next week. Now you have some friends from the Seattle area. Yes. Where you used to be there in the, sh the area playing at Notre Dame today. Yes, they are. I'm sure you had a chance to see some of your friends? Well, I didn't get a chance to see them because their game's about the same time as our game is. And last night they were in Chicago. And my son had a football game last night, so we didn't get a chance to, to get together. But I know they're here in force, and they love taking the train from Chicago over to South Bend. Well, And you also uh, provided them with some Seattle weather. Yes, they're right <laughs> at home today. This is it. If you want the feel of Seattle, this is it today. Your impressions after a year of the Mid-American Conference in general? Well, I, I got to tell you, the competition is tough. Every single game, Jerry says this, I've come to realize that every game is a battle. And you better bring your A game. You can't have a letdown. You can't think that one team isn't as good as, as you thought they might be. For whatever reason, when, when this conference starts playing each other, things start to happen. And uh, I'm very, very, I love this conference. I love the, the camaraderie of the ADs, and I, and I love the student athletes. They're a very appreciative group. Thank you very much for coming up. Thanks, guys. Thanks Always. for having me. Huskies in you. command, 11-17 to go. They lead by 35. We'll take a timeout and come back. You're watching Northern Illinois Football Comcast Sports Net. College life is great, but aren't you sick of living in cramped spaces, lack of privacy, ramen noodles? At University Plaza, we can help. It's like a Chicago high-rise with a friendly family feel. From enjoying the pleasures of private bathrooms and a restaurant-style food court, to keeping fit in a fully equipped fitness center, to lounging in the pool or hot tub. Experience so much more for less than what you might think. If you've never been here, you owe it to yourself to check us out. University Plaza, big city atmosphere in the heart of NIU. Every Friday night at 10.30, Comcast Sportsnet covers the high school sports scene like no one else in Chicago. Reports from Friday night's biggest matchup. Not only winning their first three games, but rolling over the competition. Highlights from every division. And in-depth stories about student athletes and programs making an impact in the Chicagoland area. Don't let people tell you what you can't do. Focus on what you can do and, and reach for the stars. High School Lights, presented by Farmers Insurance. Every Friday night at 10.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. When breaking news happens, the Comcast Sportsnet News Team has it covered. Breaking news out of Hallis Hall this afternoon. The Bears have acquired quarterback Jay Cutler in a deal with the Denver Broncos. Congratulations to Derrick Rose, today named the NBA Rookie of the Year. I consider myself, you know, most blessed man on the face of the earth today. Get all your Chicago sports news when it happens on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. By the way, coming up tonight, right here on CSN, 
The Stone Pony and Hawkeroo will bring you the White Sox from Comerica Park in Detroit, where the Tigers are trying to close out a division championship. However, the Twinkies are having nothing about rolling over in that division. The Twins are up four to one right now over Kansas City in Minneapolis. Three run double for Delman Young. So they will be a half game out pending tonight's ball game. If the White Sox win, they're locked up with one day to play. What a great race. Now I have to ask you a question. You and your esteemed guest here, who's also a baseball expert. Yep. You're the White Sox, you're Ozzie Ginn. What, what, what is the mentality as far as putting your lineup together? I mean, you're trying to win. Now, I've heard things in the past where managers that have had lo long-time friendships perhaps might not. I'm not saying not play to win, but maybe not play your best players. Ozzy calls the Twins the Piranhas. Does he have a great relationship with Jim Leland? Well, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. I'm saying that he goes out there tonight and he does everything he can to the death to try and win. That's what it's all about. He's answered my question, but I've heard other things in the past. Okay, back to football. You know what? You Tune mind. in on Comcast Sports Net tonight. Watching. You'll find oh, out. I, well, yeah, this is Comcast Sports in in, uh, in South Bend. I watch you on a regular basis. Man. Smuckers, free golf. I mean, you're my hero. Sir <laughs> <laughs> <our> card dealer. High <laughs> formation. Hiller, three-step drop. This is his man looking for Jordan White, number 83. Unfortunately for Western Michigan, and I think that was tipped is, again at the line. Has been uh, basically indicative of of the uh, offensive performance here. Uh, Coach Kubit, obviously, get go back to we'll go back to Kalamazoo. They'll regroup, and again in the Mid American Conference with parity. Who knows? Ball State. David, you mentioned Toledo beating Ball State to uh, Jeff Confer here. Ball State, I don't think, has won a football game this year. And Toledo's come up big in a couple of games. And uh, again, parity. That's what makes this an outstanding and interesting conference. Right. The punt is away. A low line drive bouncing kick that's going to roll, roll, and be down right around the, we'll call it the what, the 14 yard that, line? That was, that was the rugby kick. That's the that rugby kick, that directional kick. They are not gonna kick deep again to this. To, to, Tommy uh, Davis. Tommy Davis. All right, let's talk about last week's preparation for Nathan Enderley of Idaho, who's a similar style player to Tim Hiller, and compare how the numbers turned out. Let's take a look, because last week, Northern Illinois lost 34-31 to the Idaho Vandals. Enderley showed us a tremendous arm. I mean, he threw balls into spots where you went, oh my goodness, how did he get it in there? When we get a moment, there you are, you have him right there. Take a look at the numbers, what a difference it is. Three picks today of Hiller, no touches. Three and zero the other way a week ago, so. David, to answer your question, it's not only about an individual, it's about a scheme. And you, you make, make a good point. These schemes, the offensive schemes of Idaho and the offensive schemes of West, Western Michigan are very similar. They I don't think there's any question they're very similar. Now, let's talk about the psychological aspect of it. Idaho came in here last week a 16-point underdog. Correct. And I think coming off Northern Illinois, coming off this, uh, the way the ebb and flow of their schedule, I, I do believe as much as I respect Jerry and, and, and Jerry. Would, After the Purdue win, the Wisconsin right. loss, it's tough to get them right back up. It is. I'll tell you're you, dealing with humans, not machines. You mentioned Enderly. He is one of the finest quarterbacks that I have seen this year play, uh, play Division One football. Span rips off another chunk of six yards or more. He's having a Big day. You know, and, and Dixon up to make the hit. First get homecoming game. I mean, th there are a lot of things going around here uh, uh, today, a lot of subplots, so to speak. It's homecoming. It's your first Mid-American Conference game. You've played four games. Now it's time to get in conference. That's yet uh, an extra motivation. You want to get to a bowl game. Not to say Idaho wasn't important. You want to win every football game. But you know, out of conference and, and all the other factors. Another first down for Northern Illinois. 
You know, David. Span picks it up. Hold on, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule first for the Huskies. Okay. Take a look at their games. They get a chance with a bye week to heal up, and then they will pack up and head to Toledo, Ohio, and battle the Toledo Rockets, who are a very, very explosive team. Scored 37 points in a win today over Ball State. We'll get you that schedule in just a moment. Beat Colorado in Toledo also. Span 20 for a buck 26, three TDs. All are career highs. Look at the NIU schedule. They opened at Wisconsin. Home with Western Illinois. At Purdue, home with Idaho, home with Western Michigan. They now go on a two game swing after a bye week. At Toledo and at Miami of Ohio, come home for three straight at home with Akron, Eastern Michigan, and Ball State, and then at Ohio and at Central Michigan to close it out. So they will see three six foot five inch big dime quarterbacks this season in Hiller, Enderly, and Lefevre over at Central. To Marcus Grady, number three, now into the football game, a backup quarterback for the Huskies. And he'll play this one out the rest of the way. So Chandler Harnish's day is done. He directs his Huskies to 38 points. Actually, 31, seven of them, thanks to Jake Kaufman's INT return. Great opportunity for this young man. And try as you may during the week. Try to create game type situations with scripts and things like that. And, uh, with the crowd noise from the loudspeakers and everything. Getting on the field, whether it's in a roll with six minutes left basically in the game and you're ahead 38 to three, whatever it might be. There, you cannot, cannot do enough to create a game type of situation. He's in the game, he's being signaled to play, the clock is running, the crowd is here, uh, on and on. This is a great opportunity for him. Chandler Harnish today, a game manager, nine of 15, 135 and a touch, no pick, six rushes for 15 yards. His maturity as a football player is beyond that of a sophomore. Hand up to Justin Anderson, puts his head down, dragged down about the 46 yard line. Clock ticking, we are Approaching five and a half minutes, the Huskies going to win this one comfortably. Ahead 38 to three. Now, as promised, here is the NIU schedule. I like the schedule right here with this bye week next week to get prepared for a Toledo team, as you mentioned, an explosive Toledo team. What you do during that bye week, you have an opportunity to get fresh legs. You have an opportunity for guys to, you know, get caught up with, with class work. You have an opportunity to get out and do a little bit of recruiting. And it gives you two weeks of preparation for a very, as you mentioned, a very explosive offensive opponent. You know, David, on this day, and, and uh, I'd be remiss not to say this, when I think of the young men and young women that defend this country on a daily basis and how much they mean to our country, how much they mean to us. And to see this young guy, Jay Kaufman, who you've mentioned and I've mentioned, uh, you're, you're never an ex-Marine. You're always a former Marine when your time of active duty is done. And two tours of duty in the Mideast and to have this day for him, for me, is very, very special. Yeah, I think it's outstanding. In fact, I do a radio show in Chicago, and I want to get him on this week and just talk to the young man because everything I have heard is what a quality kid he is. And to see him realize some of his dreams today, pick off a pass and take it the other way, fall in a fumble, make a bunch of tackles. After what he has done in his life and accomplished, it's really a, a wonderful thing to see. We've My guess, David, if you've asked him, you know what he'd say? The most important thing is he won the football game. No question. The punt is away. It will bounce down and roll and be fielded. We got a whistle. It's going to be Western Michigan I think when he football. fielded the ball, it put his knee down. 
Did he wave a fair catch? May have, may have had the arm up and said fair catch and then started to run with the football. Either way. The Huskies will improve their record while Western Michigan will fall. Right now coming into the game, 2-2, two 1-0 and two, one and oh in the MAC for Western. They'll go to 2-3, two 1-1. And one and one. The Huskies will go to 2-2, two 1-0. And two, one and oh. And the final 351 will be played by a different quarterback, Alex Carter, a freshman out of Shawnee, Kansas. He's into the football game now for Western Michigan. He'll get a few snaps. This a thorough win for NIU. Before we, let, before we all leave today, White Sox, Detroit, prediction. I think the Sox will win one of the next two. The Twins will sweep the Royals, and the tiebreaker game will be played Tuesday at the Metrodome. And if the Twins lose in the Metrodome on Tuesday, that will be the last game ever played. Correct. The last baseball game ever to get a new stadium next year. So I never, tune in. I never, ever liked going there for the away game, away football game. It was always at night. It was never really a collusion. Who did you atmosphere. go there with? Michigan? Michigan? Yeah. Play the Gophers, Golden Gophers. Well, Hawk and the Stone Pony will have that call for you a little later tonight here on CSN. Final numbers for Chad Spann and Miko Brown. 22 for a buck 32 and three scores for Chad Spann, all career highs. Miko Brown, 15 for 88. Between the two, as you said, in our keys to the game before they ever kicked it off, run the football, keep Hiller off the field. 47 carries for 252 yards and three touchdowns. Quite a day for the NIU backfield. Quite a day for the NIU offensive line. No question. That ball will float out of bounds off the punt. Huskies will take over. 2.47 to go. We got a little assistance today by two Northern Illinois graduates. We did. Al Fine, a Northern Illinois grad. Jim Knievel, Northern Illinois grad. Thank you to them for helping us. We'll take a time out and wrap it up here on CFA. So far, it has saved us over $70,000. When we go to purchase something, we always think of direct buy first. If you live on the East Coast, West Coast, or anywhere in between, there is now a way for you to buy virtually everything you need for your home without paying traditional retail store markups. You'll save up to 50% and more off the items you need for your home and family. Join the hundreds of thousands from across North America who are already saving more than ever at Direct Buy. When we found out that we could save this money, Direct buy was the only way to go. Not expecting to be rich. I'm going to be middle class the rest of my life. And to, be, to me, this was a, a very easy way to live above my means. Act now. Call the number on your screen to receive your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy showroom. Plus, you'll receive a free copy of the Insider's Guide to Buying Direct. You do have an alternative to retail store markup. Call to get your free visitor's pass and learn how to be a member of Direct Buy. Call now. All right, there's Chad Spann, and he's the star of our play or plays of the game brought to you by, brought to you by the NIU Bookstore. Let's take a look. Big day for Chad Spann, number 28. There's touchdown number one. There is touchdown number two. And here is touchdown number three as he dives for the end zone and gets there, breaks the plane. Huskies led by that guy, Chandler Harnish, en route to a 38-3 smashing of the Western Michigan Broncos. Spans numbers, 22 for a buck 32, average six a carry, and three times he found the end zone. All three facets of Northern Illinois football today, the special teams, offense, defense, everybody came up big. Great job, few penalties. Uh, I mean, you can't say enough about the preparation of this football team and the way they came out. And Span, you know, when you get these great running backs, David, the farther they get into the game, it seems like the fresher they get. Their, their legs continue to 
uh, pump, as I, t I told you before, get your legs up underneath you, become your own best blocker. Everything just fell into place for that young man. Great effort. Hats off to him, and uh, a very, very special day. Kreider now in at tailback. You see him returning kicks. Now he gets a chance to carry the mail. You know, I've mentioned that, you know, I've all mentioned other assistant football coaches, but you know, some people think we were a running back coach, you know, you'd tell young guy how to catch, you know. There is it, there's a lot more to coaching running backs than meets the eye. And I have to say Robert Reeves, running back coach for Northern Illinois University, these guys block, they catch the ball in the backfield, they're fundamentally sound, they're not fumblers. Nice job, Robert Reeves. Congratulations, young man. The football's loose, and Northern Illinois will fall on it. Ryan Morris, a senior out of Carroll Stream, is now in at quarterback number 15. Again, White Sox baseball up next with Hawk and Steve Stone. Kent State University. Steve Stone. Steve Stone, I'm exactly that, right. Product of the Mid American Conference. There you go. You like the way I call Bob Brenly, Ohio University. Ohio University. Tommy Tommy Bobcat. Bobcat. Ohio University. David, as always, thank you so much. And, and uh, talk about a great crew and great camera a lot work of fun. and uh, great production crew, everything. It's, a, it's an honor for me to be just part of this with you guys. A lot of fun. Enjoy working with you. You're thank my you guy. Friend. Thank you. One more snap of the football with 27.1 seconds left, and then NIU will tuck away a 38 3 win over the Broncos of Western Michigan University. Stick around after the final horn. We will have some interviews for you. Down on the field, Jim Blaney's down there. He'll be with you for a little while until we take you to White Sox baseball from Comerica Park in Detroit. Huskies in punt formation on a fourth and 12. And they will let the clock expire on this snap. The punt is away. It will be fielded on a fair catch with no time left. This football game is over, as Hawk would like to say. NIU wins it 38-3. Homecoming Saturday in DeKalb, Illinois. Good victory for the Huskies. Two teams shake hands. Two coaches meet. There's Chad Spann, the star of today's game on the ground. There is head coach Jerry Kill. Looking for head coach Bill Cubitt of the Western Michigan Broncos. And a big day for Jake Kaufman. A pick, a touchdown, 79 yards. He took the interception after he tipped the pass, and he recovered a fumble a little bit after that. And he had a number of tackles. A big day for Marine Jake Kaufman. Two tours in the Middle East. There he is right there. Happy young guy. Yep. Huge day for him. Look at that smile. What a day for Jake Kaufman and for the NIU Huskies as they beat Western Michigan 38 Three, the final. That's Mike Sabach right there with Jake. Mike there is was Mike Sabach, who was his position right. coach here in DeKal before he left the Husky staff to go join the Western Michigan staff. The band is coming onto the field. The Huskies head into the Jordan Center. Winners 38 to 3. You know, you see that little greeting there between Mike Sabach and and Jake, and, and that's what athletics is all about. I mean, you know, uh, Mike is with the Western Michigan football program right now, but those relationships, that's why you, that's why you coach, just to be around, you know, around young people like that and the great things they have. To the field we go, Jim Blaney. Thank you very much, head coach Jerry Kill. As you look at the checklist of things you wanted to accomplish today, I would have to imagine that all of them have a check by them. Well, it was certainly a good day for the Huskies. We had some things go our way, but I think the biggest thing is, is our kids played hard. And, uh, you know, I think we got questioned a little bit a week ago, and uh, our kids answered the bell and came out and played physical and played hard. And when you play hard, it gives you a chance. You get the week off now before you play Toledo. How will you use the week off? 
Well, first of all, uh, I told the kids I'd give them a little break, so I, Jake Kaufman's not going to let me forget that. So we got to give them a little time off, got to concentrate on recruiting, and then we got a, a big game coming up uh, against Toledo. It gives us an extra week to prepare, so we'll use uh, uh, this extra week to, to get prepared for Toledo. Jerry, congratulations on a great game. And speaking of Jake Kaufman, he joins us to my right. Jake, uh, take us through the play. You get the tip, you get a touchdown, and it's as good as it gets us for a defensive player. Um, I'll tell you the truth, I was kind of just getting pushed around, and then I just put my hand up, tipped it, and then got the ball. I was kind of nervous for a while, but then I just took off, and, you know, the rest was the rest, so. I know a lot of things probably run through your head on a play like that, but at what point do you start to think about the road you traveled to get here to play college football? Two years serving in the United States Marine, a long way away from football, and you have the ball in your hands, you're going to the end zone. Well, I mean, I didn't think about my whole life during that play, but uh, um, yeah, every, every day I put the uniform on, I think about how I got there and sacrifices that others made to get me here so uh, yeah I think about it every day every day that I play football so can you tell us a little bit about how you came about the decision to join the military and put off playing college football well I'll tell you too that wasn't very big coming out of high school I didn't get recruited um, needed money for college and then uh, military was be my best option so how did you stay in shape for football how or were you able to at all and then what was, how long did it take to get back to be able to football shape once you're out of the military well i mean military keeps you in shape but so. true but it's, it's a little bit different i mean you don't get to do that as, as well as you do in football well um i mean i was still in good shape and then when i got here i still had the passion i needed to play football and then i mean the first year i was here i kind of got banged around but then i got into football shape um got a little harder and got a little tougher so i mean yeah and get have had good uh, strength and conditioning coaches and trainers and stuff get me along too. So. Semper Fi, great game. <laughs> Thank you. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Jim. A real honor to watch that young man play football. Jake Kaufman, a big day today. Well, Bobby, take a look at the final stats, and it's decidedly in the Huskies' favor, obviously, in a blowout win. Well, right here, that, right there, red line right through it all. Rushing yards, 255 rushing yards, 73 rushing yards. And that's the way we called it at the top, David. We that's said it. they had, to, had sustained drives and keep Hiller off the field, and they did exactly that. All right, we will take a timeout. We'll come back and wrap this thing up. Huskies win it 38-3 over Western Michigan. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. All right, welcome back. Western Michigan falls to the Huskies, 38 to three. Just around the corner, White Sox baseball. Sox and the Tigers, Detroit has got to find a way to win. The Sox will try and keep them from clinching the AL Central. Minnesota at last check was up 4-1, it's now 4-4. Kansas City has plated three. They've tied it at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Twins, as play began today, one game behind the Detroit Tigers. It's amazing, David. Spring training, then the entire season. And it comes down to it one comes weekend. On one weekend. And do you realize that the Twins had a game against the Sox where they, down to the final strike, up two runs, gave up back-to-back -back homers to lose, and had another game they led by 10 and lost. It happens. It certainly does, and, and I think that I, I enjoy this aspect of baseball, but I have to be very honest with you. I love picking the paper up and seeing the New York Yankees 10 games up in the, in the win column. There you go. Let's take a look one more time at the upcoming Northern Illinois schedule. This is our final game for this season here on Comcast Sportsnet. We've enjoyed working with the great people, Donna Turner, the SID, Jeff Comfer, the athletic director, Glenn Krupika, Robert Collins, all the people up here at NIU. To look there, they've got a bye next week, then they go to Toledo and Miami, two tough games, and then they come home for Akron and Eastern Michigan and Ball State. Well, David, for myself personally, you know how much I enjoy working uh, 
with you. And also, uh, I'd like to thank Jim Cornell Jr. for providing this opportunity. It means an awful lot to me, especially in the shadows of uh, my hometown, yeah. great city of Chicago. Yeah, that's it, baby. Absolutely right. Bob and I both coached here back in the early 80s. You were working for Lee Corso. And I was still staying close, close touch with Coach Carson. And I worked for the Hall of Famer John McDougal, who lives up the road here in Oswego. So uh, shout out to both those guys in case they... Lee has the games on, I know, out at their studios in Bristol. <laughs> and John's watching it at home. So uh, anyway, NIU wins it 38-3. to The Husky Dog is smiling. What's the name of the mascot? Diesel. That's it. Diesel the dog and Victor E. Husky... The mascot, NIU wins big. The White Sox and the Tigers are coming up next for Bob Kamel, Jim Blaney, and our entire CSN crew. I'm David Kaplan saying so long for Husky Stadium, preceding an exclusive presentation of CSN and NIU. See ya. My dad and I were big Sox fans for years, and when he passed away, I needed a new partner, and so found one, married her, and now we got a new Marielle. family tradition. <laughs> we try to do a Saturday and Sunday game, so our tradition is to get a hotel mm -hmm. and hit a twofer. He taught me all about baseball, and uh, kind of marrying the Lundgren family, you were a Sox fan, you know? Mm -hmm. Having that experience of being in the ballpark and seeing the crowd in the field, it's just, you can't explain it's the best feeling ever.